Good evening, everyone. I call this meeting to order at 6.05 p.m. Welcome to the District of Brown Deer School Board meeting uh, for today, Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. Verification of public notice. The meeting has been publicly noticed. Verification of a quorum. We do have all seven of our wonderful board members in attendance this evening. Approval of the agenda. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I will make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. Motion has been made. Do we have a second? Thank you very much, Ms. Ashley. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor will raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none, motion carries unanimously 720. And the reading of our mission statement, uh, together with our families and community, we will have our students being passionate learners, creative thinkers, and innovative leaders who enrich our world. All right, let's go on to our item number two, our business office reports, uh, Air Mac 2022-2023 Food Service Annual Report, and I believe that would be Mr. Clemmy. Yes, I'm just going to introduce it. Um, um, this, the end of the school year is uh, just happened, so we always take the time to um, review food service. We're also, uh, after this agenda item, we'll be approving the uh, last, the, the fifth year of the agreement with Airmark for the upcoming school year, but we always take that time to um, to take a few minutes and kind of look back at the year and kind of talk about what the uh, what the uh, food service program has accomplished. So this evening um, in person, we have uh, Michelle Anderson, our illustrious service director here on campus. And for those uh, in the audience online, just so that they know, um, Aramark has provided a, a, a bunch of different food items uh, this evening for the board to enjoy. And um, so that's, you see folks eating, that's why. Um, and we're gonna, uh, Continue to enjoy that throughout the evening. Um, and then um, uh, Molly Janata, who's our regional director, she's online uh, this evening and we'll be able to answer questions after the presentation. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to turn it over to Michelle Anderson for the presentation. Well, thank you very much for having me here. I hope that the food is to your satisfaction. Um, it was my order. One thing is, I remember little things. So last year, when I presented our review to all of you, and I was talking about some upcoming menu items, I remember specifically Dr. Beetle asking why some of that food was not there. <laughs> so I cooked for you tonight. <laughs> I remember that for an entire year, but I won't remember what I need to do five minutes from now. <laughs> Anyway, this is just our year in review. I will keep it short and simple. I might go past some of these slides rather quickly. If you have any questions about anything that you see, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk about any of them. Um, so this is just our agenda for my presentation tonight. That picture is from a catering that I did for Dr. Brown and the Wall of Inspiration. Nice. So um, anyway, we'll be this is our CEO and president of Student Nutrition, Barbara Flanagan. We always include her message. Um, this spring, it was about seasonal flavors, new menu items. I know I was talking to a couple of, before the meeting, um, how we tried to introduce some of those in the spring to the students, like chicken and sausage jambalaya, sweet and sour chicken, some different pizzas. And then further down on my presentation, I will talk about some changes to the high school and middle school menu. That's for the fall. And some even bigger changes, especially in the high school. Um, this is just kind of the state of the industry uh, real quick. It's about supply chain, how we've managed that, just like a lot of other businesses. Um, returning to paid meals did impact student participation, um, but they held steady throughout the year, so that is a good thing. They did not really drop off from start to finish. Uh, let's see. Implementing student feedback. I do welcome feedback. Um, obviously, if you have children of a certain age, I'm speaking more of middle school, um, they're very blunt. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> they're very blunt. Um, but, you know, I do try to read between the lines of what they're saying, and we try to implement what they ask for. Kids and brown deer like their, what I call fan favorites. They like their pizza. They like their chicken patties, um, popcorn chicken, which, so we have those on a daily basis. 
But we have introduced a variety of new salads. There is a Baja chicken salad, fruit and cheese platter, uh, bento boxes. We've even done like a taco salad. Um, those are proving to be popular, especially at the high school and among some of the staff members too. Um, but their favorite, other than pizza, is walking tacos. Mm -hmm. So we do try to incorporate those um, frequently. And like I said, we featured like quesadillas, a barbecue mac and cheese, a meatball mac and cheese, a chicken pot pie, things like that. Um, <clears throat> their, one of their feedback is more made to order options like salad bars. That's always a top request. So one day I was down at the high school and I'm thinking, how can I make this happen with what I have? And I thought, well, I could maybe ask for some new equipment. And that led to a small renovation of the high school kitchen. We have the brand new pod, which I don't know if any of you have seen, but it's beautiful. Um, the kids love it. We do a lot of service out of there, a la carte items, food items. So this coming year, we actually are in the very early stages of working with a designer right now, um, renovating the inner service line for the high school, which will probably take about a year, start to finish. But we're going to upgrade it so there is no repetition. We're going to do more made-to-order items, uh, made-to-order deli with a toaster oven. Um, mm. So it's going to be exciting. You know, we worked with Belcher just recently and uh, he's working on what we want. And then pretty soon we can present it to everybody else and get things rolling. Um, <clears throat> Breakfast, like I said, they want the sweet things. Uh, Dutch waffles, if you read that one, it's a, basically a mini funnel cake. It's whole grain. Ooh. It's oh, it <laughs> um, It's compliant. Chocolate crescent rolls. But we've also introduced some hot sandwiches, like egg and cheese biscuits, uh, sausage bagels, things like that. So they're enjoying that. Um, one thing we've done is fresh baked muffin tops. We, donuts, of course, are popular. Uh, we're going to introduce something called cookie hummus in the fall. But I am not going to just, so you know, if you have children, please don't call it hummus because they're not going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it's actually really good. It, it is made with a garbanzo bean, but they're carnival, like m and cookies, crumble finished with sun butter, mm -hmm. um, honey. I've tried it. Some of the staff has tried it. It's good, but again, I am not going to market it as hummus in any way, shape, or form. Because <laughs> I want them to try it. It's not a cookie dough. Cookie dough, cookie dip, somewhere along that line, but I know that hummus is not going to be mentioned. <laughs> if they ask what's in it, I'll be honest, obviously, but we're not going to title it as that. Let us know when you're serving it. Um so again, what's you know, we always feature limited time offers. That's some of the food items that we have introduced this year. Mexican street corn is a side. Um, fan favorites, like we did a harvest rain bowl, baked chickens, romaine with orange chicken, um, a beef taco tacho bowl. Uh, some of those limited time offers are more popular than others, but some kids do try it. They are a little bit more adventurous. And we feel that it's important for them to try something brand new. They might like it. Um, again, in the fall, uh, we did, I want to say the chickpea, the chipotle chickpea sub um, was not hugely popular with the students, but it was with the staff. Mm -hmm. I've got, I got several emails from those who tried it in all caps that said it was outstanding. And I am somebody who I like regular chickpeas, but I don't like hummus. I tried it and it actually was very good. I was pleasantly surprised. So I may introduce that in different forms. I could put it in a bento box or things like that. So that's what happens when we do with limited time, uh, limited time offers. Uh, we get different ideas. The Asian chicken salad was another one that was very good. And some of these will show up from time to time on our menu. So we do offer healthy options. So if your children ask, we do have them every single day. <laughs> Again, just some promotions that we've done um, throughout the year. Like we'll celebrate national, well, I should say there's a national cheeseburger day, but we serve cheeseburgers every day. So. <laughs> um, but we've done like Star Wars day, that was May 4th. You know, we'll do French toast day, 
National Cookie Day, where everybody will get a fresh baked cookie with their lunch. So every month there's something fun for the kids. Again, if I'm going too fast, please slow me down. Um, if you have any questions though, let me know. These are just some pictures of the year in review. Some of our staff members in the newly opened pod up in the left corner. Another catering that we've done. The middle picture is, he is called Ace. That is our elementary school mascot. Encouraging students to be healthy. Um, Taco Day was another promotion that we've done, and that was the meal that we served that day. Again, just some other promotions with the food that we've done. Um, down in the corner is the chicken and sausage jambalaya. We served that with donut holes, trying to entice the kids to eat it. National Hot Chocolate Day we've done. And that in the upper, the, actually on the left side, that is your pot in the high school. So that is our grab and go cooler that we have filled with bento boxes, parfaits, salads, sandwiches. We also have condiments, some fruit in there. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for them. Our drink cooler, the chips, those are all a la carte items, but they do get a decent variety every day. And then in the right side is one of my new staff members who's doing an awesome job, that's Corey in the middle school. We opened up the third service line, um, which in my tenure here had not been opened until this spring. So we got that open. It's usually popular. The pizzas and grab and go sandwiches, fries are out of that station. Behind him is the frozen yogurt machine. So I'm sure that pizza and fries were being served before, right? Yes. So where yes. was it before? We have three service lines in the middle school. So we had it on the other two sides. Um, it just, it feels like that's a nicer presentation. Okay. And we had that beautiful space and we just, we wanted to use it. So is all of your, all of your meals prepared right here in the kitchen or are you bringing some from somewhere else? No, we have the middle school is what we call our production kitchen. Okay. So everything is produced here. Um, the high school will have some food cooked down there, but we're hoping to change that with our renovation where they can cook more at the high school. Um, that's just a walk down the hall. And then our elementary school also cooks on their site. So we're not transporting any kind of cooked food unless it's down the hall to the high school. Question, how, yes. how much is lunch? <laughs> right. hey, I might need to start coming here for lunch, man. Forget that going, going someplace else. I come right here to the district. Adult lunch are 425. Oh, damn oh, good. Set up your account, put your money in. I'm gonna put my mom's set my account, put my money in, I'll be all good. Well, I know, I know somebody who can help me with that. Yeah, right. So that is our frozen yogurt machine, which we opened in the fall. That is Abby, who was our intern in the fall. Um, I'm hoping to maybe get another intern someday. Abby did a great job for us. Um, actually, I just saw her on Friday, so we still keep in touch. She was a wonderful young lady. She was with us for about two months. Um, she did a phenomenal job. She, I can't say enough good things about her, but that is also the frozen yogurt machine that we have in the middle school. Is she one of our students or a college student? No, she was a, college, she was a grad student at Mount Mary. I'm sorry, did you need me to go back? No. I have a question. I don't yes. know if you're ever going to think that. I look that you're um, going through the offerings and the nutritional values, but are you going to get to that? Is there a section on how lunches are paid for? Does it go straight through air? I'm not going to district. Just the student lunch accounts. What I'm wondering is when they use those, use the cards, if there's no money on the, uh, on the cards, how does that work? At what point? Are they refused lunch? So we have never refused a student a lunch. Um, so at any location. If they don't have money on their account, they still get a first lunch. What comes into play is if they take another entree or if they want a second lunch or if they want any of the extras like chips or some of the drink cooler, they do need to have money on their account for those items. Okay. Okay, because we, we don't utilize the uh, the nutrition for families. So, <clears throat> so the parent elects not to utilize them. They never put money in the account. 
if that child refused when they are trying to purchase them? They're not refusing a meal, no. But anything extra, yes. So you're trying to? No, I'm going to try to see. So when that winds up, who pays for that? Like if there's never any money to put on the consultation book. Like, does the district pay for that? Well, what I would recommend is that when we're at the register, we see so many kids every single day. If they don't have an alert on their account that says they're not allowed to eat, Oh, some kids do have a message to say no breakfast allowed, but breakfast is free this, you know, <coughs> every student. Oh, okay. Some do have what they call either a temporary stop or permanent stop on their account. And the parent puts that on? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. But if they don't have that measure on their account, we have no way of knowing that it's intentional. Okay, so. Okay, so it just looks like, oh, let's get it. <laughs> but we would we would reach out with like, you know family with negative balance to see what the situation was to see if it was you know an oversight whether they whether they knew their child was taking trying to take advantage of lunch you know and they hadn't contributed or what the situation was. But yes, I do recommend that if you if it's intentional and you don't want your children to either partake in like a la carte or or meals at all, then you contact. You know, the district and have them kind of put an alert on their staff account. That's a good feature. <laughs> <laughs> Poor baby. Somebody's buying fries every day. So I'm curious for those with students in the district, what is their feedback on the lunch? Why it's Fertilized is that it's not good, but I sent them pictures and told them it was delicious. So I sent them to try taking lunch. He will take whole lunch every day. I think the so middle school kids like it. Right, that's what Michelle was yeah, saying. The middle school schoolers is. like it. Except they don't like. I'm glad. I don't know when you put the third line in. Got to have lunch, which you wouldn't get food. Because the line was so right. Yeah. So whatever, and I have a, even though we don't use it, people get their sleep. People get their sleep. Okay, staffing in all areas is a challenge, and it's obviously Eric Mark continues to work through that. So there are periods where. You know, I mean, the pod occasionally the pod is not open because you know if they're short staff, very, very rarely. But that's that you know you have to make choices at certain points when you only have so many staff available. But now I think we've gotten um, they've been able to hire um, some really quality people that you know are here on a regular basis, and so now it allows them to kind of expand the offerings. Well, I don't know about regularly. high school, but when I go in and I see the middle school, they seem to have ice cream. <laughs> Well, uh, one of the new hires that I did this spring was we have a brand new head cook, and he's doing a great job. Like, I do get compliments on the regular about him. He's doing a phenomenal job. He has a great attitude. I said before the meeting, actually, that eighth graders said that he deserved a raise. Because his <laughs> and as I said, anytime an eighth grader gives a compliment, that's a really tough gig. Um, so I give him a lot of credit. And even my, the rest of my staff, we did have some turnover. I did new hires. Um, they're doing a great job. I'm, they're friendly. I'm getting like just compliments. The kitchen is running very well. I have to say, we don't, everybody has their little bumps here and there, but we work through them. They have a great attitude, and I think they're doing a great job. So hopefully they all come back. They all said that they have, or that they will. Um, and then we'll have some buyers as well. Board members, any other questions? Is there a menu per school, then? There is a menu per school. Elementary has their own menu. This year, um, well, the past several years, actually, middle school and high school have shared a menu. Um, but there are some changes coming to the high school menu. And actually, we're going to incorporate a lot of those into the middle school as well. So what we're gearing up for with the renovation, but we're going to introduce it in the fall, in the fall, is a more made, more made to order menu for those kids. So on a rotating basis, we call it like restaurant rotation. So one we still have um, 
like a tortilla station where they get up nachos, made to order nachos or tacos mm-hmm. or things like that. The next week could be um, a mac and cheese bar mm-hmm. or another pasta bar, um, yeah. a baked potato bar. Are you talking about high school? Yes. But we are going to introduce some of that too as well in the middle school. I check with the Dr. Beatles. Thank you very much. No, bear, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. no. Are my staff is doing that. Oh, okay. No, no, no. When I say made to order, it's not, not to be self service at all. <laughs> yeah. no. So, my, my staff, <laughs> I'm sorry, I saw your face. Okay. <laughs> I didn't quite know what where you were going with it, but no, they, no, no. It's not going to be self-service at all. Oh, but they can take that. So they'll come up to the counter and they'll tell my staff behind like what they want. And then my staff will put it on there and they'll make it for them. I don't think that's all. No, no, I want you to know that yeah, it's going to be. Envision. No, no. But trust me, I, I envision. That's why I was like, how do I do a major order salad bar with the equipment that I have right now? How do I make that happen? It's a request I get all the time. I, I have nightmares about people just doing whatever want and i'm like then i can't reserve any of that food the next you know it's a lot of waste but no my staff will handle that part of it so <laughs> like chipotle <laughs> and when we have our new equipment and we have our major order sandwich they can think subway or um, any like firehouse subs who knows any of those types of places any other questions well i just want to say michelle Thank you. Was your first year, my first year? Did we come in together? I can't. I'll be in here in two years in October. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you to your commitment and dedication to the school district of Brown Deer. Um, you, you came in and you have been all in <laughs> um, since you started. Um, I watch how you uh, interact with our children and our staff and you cannot go anywhere uh, from this day forward. Um, but thank you for being also being innovative and creative and trying to create different options um, for our students um, to want to eat our food um, in our We're cafeteria. Trying. Like, so if, thank you very much. If you have students here, please encourage them to eat something other than pizza. Just tell <laughs> Wyatt to ask for what he wants. I know what I, happened. I took less notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to say yeah. I, do you have kids throwing a lot of food away, though? I hear that they're throwing away so much food. So one of the things about student lunches is we are under guidelines from the government meaning that a compliant meal um, has to include, like a lunch has to include at least a food or a veggie. So as you know, sometimes kids don't want to necessarily eat fruits or veggies. We do a lot of fresh fruits, a lot of fresh veggies. Um, That's what that slide is actually, I get, um, it actually comes from the Department of Defense, but I get a lot of fresh fruit from them. It's not just apples, oranges, I'll get pears, I'll get cherries, watermelon, cantaloupe, kiwis, plums, peaches, things that are in season. So that being said, it is more cost effective for them to take a meal, so we encourage them to take that fruit or veggie. But I'm sure that sometimes they come more than often. They probably do throw it away. Mm-hmm. Maybe with a juice box. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> do you all have where they could put stuff if they didn't eat it? That maybe other kids might want it? No, where is that? No. That's a question yeah. that I get a lot. And Some places can learn that. We don't encourage that just for safety reasons, food safety. Um, once it leaves our <coughs> so much, we have no control over what maybe happened to that piece of fruit. Okay. It's unfortunate, but it's not something that I just, we don't know. I mean, a kid could have licked that apple before they put it in the or something. So we just can't take that chance. Or even I know Dr. Brown talked about some of the more natural stuff. Maybe even if we could use it for compost. That's what I was thinking. All right. Do we have a car? I know she wanted one, but I, I, I <laughs> well we have planters that the construction team made oh. down there now, but we're gonna put flowers in there, not necessarily. No, but just ask. Yes. Yeah. Well, just like, ask a <laughs> question. Would you like an apple? Yes or no? But I guess that slows up the line, huh? Well, we usually give them so we give them a lot of options before they get to the register. 
And by the time they get to the register, we try to keep something. We, we will actually have equipment next to the register that's going to allow us to keep better variety of fruit right there. Um, so they can have a choice. Now it's something that we'll probably keep like a basket of apples or oranges, or sometimes it's a bag of raisins. Um, just something that's easy for them to kind of pick up and go. Perfect. And we've met our school requirement or state requirement, ensuring that they've taken everything that they are required to take. That's what we Right. Once it leaves that area, then not to say we don't have a responsibility because we want to ensure that our children are eating healthy, not just taking the healthiness. Um, but as far as it relates to the school and meeting the requirements of the lunch program, state lunch program, as long as they've taken those items from the area of disbursement, we can have our work. Yes. Yeah. Once they check out, yeah. Um, well, yeah, they can do whatever they want yeah. with that food, but up to that point, um, <coughs> at the point of sale is where my staff comes in and make sure that they have a compliance meeting. Absolutely. Right. Any other questions? I'm good. I don't want to hold up any more time. Like I said, if anybody does want the full presentation, let me know. I'm happy to email it and go through anything with you. Send it to, if you would send it to Nana, I, we can. I have it. Oh, okay. We just upload it to Purple. Did you guys enjoy your dinner? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was, hey, that, uh, that fruit, that, uh, that fruit pizza. Yeah, like how much? <laughs> Man, if my wife was here right now, she'd be like, okay, we have a whole lot of trouble. I do fill containers. Okay, we'll get it to you. No, no, no. Checking. No, this is yours. Um, honestly, I'll probably, it's okay, come back and just want in and grab my equipment. Yeah, that's fine. That's why it's a pizza box. It's so fine. We will make. We'll put everything away. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just, you know, I don't want to take anything away from anybody who wants to eat okay. it or take it home. I'm going to take it now. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So let's go on to uh, item B, approval of the 23-24 food service management contract. Yeah, so hopefully this is uh, easy to win based on what you just enjoy. Um, <laughs> so uh, every, uh, you know, um, food service agreements are five years. We are on the fourth and final renewal of um, our, our um, contract with Aramark. Um, every year you have to approve the, the renewal amendment. Um, we are on the, um, uh, the plan where we pay uh, on a per meal basis. So we, we are the ones that are uh, kind of absorbing the risk. But as you know, our food service balance is quite extensive right now, so it's not an issue. Um, and by the, the federal rules, they're allowed to increase price, or increase their uh, charge by 3%. That's the maximum. So um, during which inflation is in general, it's a bad deal. So uh, we're recommending uh, approval of the um, the, the uh, contract amendment um, as presented. All right. Would someone like to make a motion? It's Ashley. I will. All right, motion as well, we got to read it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, see, that's that food. That's yeah, it is. It really is. And it's not even mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm badly programmed, but I'm going to go and read it. I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2324 Food Service and Management Contract that's presented tonight. Thank you very much, Miss Ashley. So eloquently put. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second, Dr. Peterson. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other further discussion? I just want to say that while we clearly did enjoy, we further appreciate the efforts that you've made to accommodate our students as well as our staff um, as you are presenting. So that that's what's important here tonight. Oh, good. Like I said, we, we try to incorporate what they want. So. And actually, I know a couple of high schoolers that, that live in our uh, on our block, and they have rave reviews about the food or whatever. So they've never had any issues in relationship to the food and stuff. So that's if the high schoolers say yes, then you know it's it, it's it's doing pretty good. All right, all right. So with that being said, all in favor, will raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? And you see now, motion carries unanimously, seven to zero.
All right. Thank you very much, Airbar. We are good to go. All right. I'll, I'll just I'll just say real briefly, just as a, a precursor so that the board understands the process. So next year, it would be the being the final year, the DCI mandated process that every five years you go through an RP process. So that will be uh, a joyful time for me between January and April while you interview for service companies, test things out, and you, you go through a rubric scoring system and you know, whatever, whatever comes out of that is your new food service company. So, or, or the same one. So we'll, uh, that will be a process that will be ongoing and it's required, even though we appreciate what they're doing, we just, we have to do that, uh, that process every five years. So that'll be coming up in the spring of 2021. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin. All right, let's go on to item C, business office uh, report. Mr. Clement. Yep, just a few short items. Um, as we are approaching the uh, end of June, we are um, getting ready for our new fiscal year, our new insurance um, agreements, which you uh, approved last month. Um, we are uh, we just finished our benefit open enrollment process where we had uh, most of our employees that participated. We have actually a few more than what I have included on the memo. So we're just going through with some last minute folks that um, for whatever reason we're unable to connect. And so we're going through um, just to, to finish that up um, as well. It's, it's important for us um, this year, to get it done right away because we are, um, I, and I've mentioned this before to the board that we um, we are going to be um, paying out our teaching staff um, their summer contracts in June. Um, instead of going over the summer, it alleviates a lot of um, issues with WRS and, um, and and that. So we're gonna do that. Most districts do this, so we're gonna follow that. So we have to have all this benefit information in place um, like right away before, before we run that deal. So. Um, teaching contracts and no, speaking of our teachers and our notice of assignment, um, uh, this is the last week for teachers to sign their contracts. Um, I did look today, we are almost at 80 um, this evening. So we're very close. We have about 30 to go. Um, and so 80 returning teachers are 80%? 80, 80, 80 returning contracts. I have about 80 contracts that have been signed, um, about 30 to go. I eliminate ones, obviously, when we have presentations. Count on the percentage, and we have hired a number of uh, new teachers already that have signed their contract, so it's part of that conversation as well. Um, so we are uh, we're getting very we're, we're getting close. The deadline is Thursday uh, by the statute, June fifteenth. So we will uh, hopefully see a nice rush over the next forty eight hours to finish that process. And then um, notices of assignment are also out for support staff, and those are coming in now, and those are due by uh, Monday, the twenty sixth of June. Our custodians, administrative assistants, and um, education assistants will be back in fall. Um, general insurance line renewals. Um, I just got some information uh, yesterday regarding that, and so I'll have a presentation for you um, uh, in two weeks to approve all of our um, liability, cyber, property, automotive. Um, we're looking at across the board of about an 8% increase, so it's not. Um, Outlandish, but you know we kind of expect that we were going to be seeing that. Um, that thing. So I'll have a report for you um, that will do all those lines um, at the end of the month. Um, the facility assessment. Uh, I know I was not here um, at the last board meeting, but we did um, finish the process with um, Performance Solutions to do a walkthrough. They were here on Friday. Uh, it was an interesting setup. Um, uh, if Matt shared it with you, I, and I apologize if I you know, but I always go ahead. He had a, uh, he has this camera that kind of, it, it looks like, you know, some kind of outer space sort of thing, but he has this camera that he wears on his harness in the back end. So he's walking through the hallways, taking, constantly taking still photographs of, of in every direction. Basically, it's like the Google, you know, uh, street view uh, through the hallways and stuff. So that, you know, taking uh, records of that. So there. Uh, they finished the middle high school uh, last Friday, uh, and they'll be working now on their reporting, and we expect that to see that um, the initial report uh, for the board at the end of August. And then we'll be able to start planning ahead uh, more, uh, more precisely as to what we need to be addressing from a facility standpoint going forward. Um, and then um, I wanted to touch base on the state budget update because we had a uh, a lot of news has happened in the last few days, um, starting last Thursday, um, when the state um, we hadn't heard anything for quite a while, and apparently there was a lot of negotiating going on behind the scenes. And then uh, when they finally figured out the shared revenue piece for um, cities and counties and that, um, but everything else had already kind of been worked out. So they announced on Thursday, and Joint Finance was supposed to um, approve this package uh, today, but they had a deadline. Last time I looked at four o'clock or so, that they were still 
going through hearings. But just some basic um, highlights I wanted to share if you weren't aware of, of what the, the parent news is. And, and um, we had a SLASBO meeting on Friday, which is the Southeast Business Managers. Um, and they basically said that um, they said that the, uh, the the basically the recipe is cooked. Like they've already come up. This is the um, this is the plan. Additional lobbying probably isn't going to make any changes. This is the deal that was um, created between the legislature and the governor. So um, it does provide for um, about a billion dollars in additional spendable revenue for K twelve um, education, and it will maintain two thirds funding overall. Um, the big thing for revenue limits um, is that they are providing a $325 per student increase uh, in both fiscal years, so this year and next year. Um, $325 last few years has been zero, um, so that's obviously a big jump. It's not what was asked for between the $350, $650, um, and has not kept up with inflation, so that will create um, additional issues down the road. They are increasing uh, special education categorical aid um, from 31 to 33.3%, so not a huge increase, but some additional money in special ed. Um, there will be a general education equalization aid increase. Um, it's not specific at this point, and then how it impacts every district will be a little bit different, but that will soften the blow a little bit of the revenue limit increase. So that 325 will not automatically mean a tax increase uh, of that amount. Um, it will mean that some of it will be probably covered by, by uh, Aid. A couple of programs that have, that have been introduced, but there's very little detail about it. Um, 30, $30 million is um, in there to support mental health grants, but there's no indication as of uh, even today um, whether that's a per year or over multiple years and how that money is being distributed and what exactly the requirements are for that. And then there's $50 million to support uh, literacy efforts, uh, coaching, doing the science of reading in districts. And again, how that's exactly distributed. I heard today that it might be the state hiring coaches to work um, with districts, which obviously is a little bit challenging because that means they're going to probably be hiring some of the people that are actually coaching in our schools um, to you know, then work around the state. So we'll have to see what that looks like. Um, the big news for choice um, and charter programs is that the per student cost or per student pay from the state has increased significantly. Um, in the case of choice, um, we will see an increase from $8,400 to $9,500 for a fourth through eighth grade. And for high school students, it will go from $9,000 to $12,000. So uh, now with choice, that's exclusively on the tax levy. So I get that number in October where they say, here's how much is going into the choice program and we levy for it. So even if we stay the same, <laughs> uh, for every high school student, it's gonna cost 33% more um, going forward. So that will be that will impact our tax levy as well. Um, charter, charter payments, there's a similar kind of jump um, going from $9,200 to $11,000. <clears> the concern from the business managers right now is that, and they haven't said this yet, but we always know there are uh, adjustments to the open enrollment. But that's not included in this piece, but philosophically, one would argue that if you're increasing the amount that's traveling to a student and you're doing it in the choice of the charter program, why wouldn't you do that in the open enrollment program? So in our case, with our huge deficit between incoming and outgoing, um, we could see a huge increase in open enrollment out expense if that's what happens. So going from you know, $8,500 per student to you know $12,000 for high school students would be, would be a significant. Uh, hopefully I was gonna say in relationship to that. So that leads me to two things. All right, so number one, doing the math, it comes out to be our 1,600 students with the 325, comes out to about $520,000 extra in revenue. Now, I think what this does is it gives us this opportunity because we know it's going to cost us so much more now for students enrolling out that maybe we that's when we need to put together that whole system of trying to get in contact with these students that are enrolling out. Sorry, that's no, I'm just saying, like, I mean, we really now because now you – now there's so much more money that's involved in being able to do this that that almost could almost pay potentially pay for a position to make sure that we are trying to keep some of these students in uh, that potentially could be leaving the district. So because that is going to be because like right now we've got 1,600 students in the district, but how many students that generally have we on our for our revenue limit purposes we're at 1,750. Uh -huh. So because we include open enrollment out, in right? That, that calculation. So it's about 150 students out. No, it's 230 right now. So about 200 students out. And then, so if you do the math on that, I mean, 
you know, that that's a nice little chunk of change. So I, I think know, we're, we at, we're this year, um, cause we already know the, uh, we've gotten the, the numbers from, from BPI for our, our final aid payment. They pull out the money that we owe other districts and they redistribute it. Um, it'll be $1.9 million, $1,920,000 1, for open enrollment out. You include something where all the high school, everybody gets significantly more and the high school students get even more. And I, I do, believe, I mean, we do have, um, we average between 15 and 20 students at most grade levels kind of thing. And so in high school, you could be looking at 60 to 80 kids where all of a sudden 33% higher cost for that group. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to look at it again. It'll be, it'll be a discussion we'll have certainly going forward, whether or not, you know, we have whatever we can do if, if this happens. And again, we don't know what the interpretation of the budget is from open enrollment standpoint, but like I said, there would be an argument that we've made, well, if we're doing it to be, why wouldn't public schools also get the additional money? You know, then we'd have to have a discussion of, as, as a board is, what, we, what we, can we do to reduce the open enrollment out, or do we need to look at more open enrollment in to help offset the cost? So that's, you know, that'll be a conversation for 2024. Mr. Robinson, you had a question? And so to be clear, though, they're saying that we'd have to pay more for those students, not that they're giving us more to pay them more. It's well, it, 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 it's the open enrollment formula is the same whether it's in or out. So, if we took in more high school students, we would benefit from that. We don't, though, right now we have that huge deficit between the, the amount of students we take in versus the amount that are out. Well, but I mean, like with the increases, though, they're saying, okay, choice schools, now you'll get this amount. But are they giving the public schools that much more to be able to pay the additional amount or no? No, they're giving us $25 yeah. per yeah. student. And the choice and charter, you know. Um, it uh, goes up either eleven hundred dollars or almost three thousand. So the window for open enrollment is usually like February until April. the end. Until April. Yeah. Until April. And I, I feel like we've had this conversation where we were going to kind of take, do an analysis on, um, yeah, those numbers and students leaving the district. And we are also going to talk about ways in which we can market and retain a few more students rather than have them take advantage of you know open enrollment because maybe the feel that they can get better offerings, class offerings somewhere else. Um, is that happening in the district? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Ellen Simmons, our parent engagement liaison, uh -huh. um, has called all of the families on the list. Okay. Um, and she's compiling that information and should be ready to present at the board retreat in terms of what that looks like. Um, so we can better understand um, what is it, what is it that the family one better understand, so understand if what number of percentage of those families have never ever been in Brown here, perhaps started at a magnet school somewhere. Yeah. Just chose to stay despite the fact that they now live around here, but also understanding what what is it that they're looking for um, that we're that we're not. Is is Mr. Shimmons the only one analyzing that data? Um, I can ask her. Okay. I'll let her do But also, Kevin, you were saying um, a push for open enrollment ten. I'm just saying, like whatever. You, I'm just saying that that's the, the two ways you reduce that. If you have the same number of open enrollment in and out, there's no, it's a net gain. So you either have to reduce the open enrollment out, which you have less control over, than the amount of coming in. But I'm, just, I'm not suggesting, I'm not okay. promoting that. I'm just saying like that'll, that'll be a discussion we'll have to have that if if we feel like that's a source of revenue that we'd have to talk about whether or not we have the space to do that. Well, too, and we don't know what that dollar amount is. We don't have that right. open enrollment for people. Right, we're still waiting to hear. So there's still, there's still a lot that's, and uh, I'll get to that when we talk about the budget, but there's a lot that, I mean, like I said, they're voting, the, the joint finance was supposed to have a uh, discussion and voting today. Um, nothing is official yet. And, and then there's still passing the budget and then a potential, you know, line item veto of something that changes something and then whether there's an override. So really until the budget is passed, uh, you know, other things could happen. So I'm kind of just waiting to see, but at least we start, this is the first time we started to hear a framework of what we can expect. So, um, with a lot of the other things that have been in the budgets, they've attached conditions to the funds. Did they do that for any of the education stuff? 
Um, we don't know about, I don't know the details with the mental health grants and the, the, the literacy pieces. Um, they haven't, there's very little detail. What they said is that DPI will be going through a process now of operationalizing how those um, monies will be distributed. So if there are requirements, whether it's reimbursed, um, I think like a lot of the grants that we do, we have to spend the money and then we claim it, or whether it's just going to be like the Get Kids Ahead grant where they just give all districts a set amount based on some formula. What does that look like? You know, we just don't know yet. So um, hopefully we'll hear about that over the next several weeks and, and, and then have a better sense of what does that mean for us in particular. And then there, there was conversation about potentially outside of the budget having additional categorical aid opportunities for districts. Um, so again, and those usually have some strings attached to it because it's for a specific thing that you're trying to do. So we'll have to see what, again, what, if anything, becomes available, something that we would be able to uh, take advantage of. All right. Um, all right, thanks. So that, uh, that is the end of my uh, business office update. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Clemmie. Let's go on to our item D, approval of new hires. Mr. Clemmie? Yes, we have three new hires this evening. Um, we have Eric Newman, who is going to be a middle school math teacher. Uh, we have Matt Stahl, who will be our new uh, middle high school fire teacher, and Carlos Alva, a high school English teacher. Wait, no, choir, choir teacher, choir, right? Choir. So do we have two choir teachers? No. no. Think, I, I don't know. My, my memo says they, they, Carlos Alva is English teacher. Okay, so we need Sorry, to I I, we didn't notice that that was just, uh, yeah. so, so is he a high school English teacher? High school English, yes. It's, it's just a recommendation to... Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. It says choir on the agenda. agenda. Okay. Sorry, yeah, that's what I was doing. All right, no problem. All right, would someone like a, to make motions on the new hires? So I'd like to make a motion to approve the hiring of Eric Newman as a middle school math teacher, uh, Dan, Vance Dahl as a middle school choir teacher, and Carlos Alba as a high school English teacher uh, for the 23-24 school year. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. All right, Ms. Bacon. All right, motion is made. Second, any discussion? Here you seeing that all in favor would raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? Here and seeing them. Motion carries unanimously for the hiring of Eric Newman, Vance Dahl, and Carlos Alba. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the Brown Deer team. All right, let's go on to item uh, E, approval of resignations. Mr. Clement. Yes, and we have a number of them this evening. Again, it's the time that some changes are being made to do. Uh, we get a full report in July. We, we share with you the retention information, but um, in some cases, we have um, we have a couple of staff members who um, have had their first baby and are deciding to you know stay home um, after the after the baby's been born. Um, we have some that are moving on to different motion positions. Um, AP, you're going to AP in that. And then we just have some that are looking at other districts. So um, we do have a, 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 a group of them this evening. So I'll just read them off real quick. We have Riley Anderson, an elementary school third grade teacher. Um, Cleo Stenzel, an elementary school second grade teacher. Kayla Norris, our gifted and talented coordinator at the elementary school. Taylor Surprise, a third grade teacher at the elementary school. Sarah Griffey, a middle school instructional <laughs> coach. Uh, Jenny Appleby, one of our high school guidance counselors. And Natalie Robinson, a high school school. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Would someone like to make a motion? Dr. Beto, I'd like to make a motion um, to approve the resignation of Riley Anderson, elementary school teacher, Cleo Stenzel, an elementary school teacher, Caitlin Norris, an elementary school gifted and talented teacher, Taylor Surprise, an elementary school teacher, Sarah Griffey, a middle school instructional key. Coach Jenny Appleby as a high school guidance counselor and Natalie Robinson as a high school social studies teacher, all effective June 8th of 2020. All right, thank you very much. Motion has been made. Do we have a second? Thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All right, just like to thank all of those individuals for giving their time to. Uh, the Brown here and working with our working with our young people and most a falcon always a falcon. So with that being said, 
All in favor would raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? You can see that motion carries unanimously 720. All right. Let's go on to our item number F, approval of administrator contract. Yes, it was uh, with great pleasure tonight that I announced um, after uh, a long uh, tenure as interim, um, we are excited to officially uh, recommend uh, Matt Russ to uh, assume the role full time, officially, all, all the time, uh, as the director of facilities and rounds in the school. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Would someone like to make a motion to approve? I will make a motion to approve the administrator contract for Matthew Russ as the director of facilities and grounds for the 2023-24 school year. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. Motion has been made. Do we have a second? Thank you very much, Ms. Ashley. Motion has made a second. Any discussion? Hearing seeing none. All in favor, raise hand and or aye. aye. Any opposed? Hearing seeing none. Motion carries down to 720. Congratulations, Mr. Russ. All right. All right. <laughs> Got applause even before the vote was over. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, okay with that. <laughs> so, no, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity that uh, the district has given me, the board has given me as well. Um, I hope that um, in the past uh, nine months, you see what I have started and will continue to do, which is make Brown Deer a better place for our staff, our students, and our district. That's where I continue to keep going. So I appreciate the fact that you guys are giving me the opportunity to continue doing what I've already started. So thank you very, very much. All right. All right. Appreciate that, man. All right. All right. Let's go on to our, oh, wait, let's see how many administrative contracts. Just the one. Okay. All right. Let's go on to our item G, approval of employment agreements. We have a couple of uh, uh, employment agreements tonight that involve teachers or uh, positions that aren't the normal 180-day contract, because those are automatically renewed. So the, the two that we have in front of you tonight um, um, are the two school psychologists, so Haley Weirspa and Rebecca Feesfeld, um, to renew their contracts for the 23-24 school. All right, but so no Dr. No Dr. Gray? Not tonight. Point. Not tonight, okay, because it's in the pack. Okay, all right. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the employment agreements for Rebecca and for Haley. I move to approve the employment agreement for Rebecca Deesfeld as a school psychologist for 2023 school year. I also move to approve the employment agreement for Haley Burzba as a school psychologist for the 2023. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do that. <laughs> no, but you, you said you moved twice. Dice. Yeah, so you just, it should have just been one. Okay. All right. Okay, so we have one motion. I move to approve the employment agreement for Rebecca Thiesfeld as a school psychologist for 2023, 2024 school. And Haley. And Haley Wurzler. All right. Why is it two Second. Because you said move, move. Right. You said make a motion, make a motion. <laughs> All right, Ms. Smith. Okay, so here we go. So, so okay, so we, we did it together. Okay, so the motion has been made. All right, so thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Do we have a second? <laughs> thank you very much, Ms. Bacon. Motion has been made and seconded. <laughs> any, any, any discussion? Sorry. Actually, I do have a question okay. for, for the contracts that we had um, tonight. Um, and I want to ask the question in general. How how is sick time calculated for employees for their contracts? How is sick time calculated for administrators or for, for, for both? Or Let's deal with specifically the ones we've had here tonight. The teacher contracts. The school psychologists are the ones we're looking at now. Well, we've been we have been reviewing um, what. That sick time looks like mm -hmm. in initial contracts, and so that's been shifting over time. Um, I was the first one that uh, took the, you know, when I when I uh, suggested my own contract when I when I first started here, 
to move it from where we had been like almost across the board um, and starting to slowly whittle it down to um, more appropriate levels. So we continue to do that. But when we have renewals of things that already existed where um, without 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 complete agreement with between the two parties, we can't really do much. So we're working on a plan to kind of, as we go forward, to kind of um, put more um, appropriate amounts in place. So we're grandfathering those that are already right, right. Gotcha. So, so I get the grandfather piece from the from the accumulation standpoint, but from the new contracts, like the new ones we've had tonight, including um, the one for for Matt, how does the how is it worded? The credited cumulative days up front, how is that calculated? Oh. Uh, are you saying on the annual basis? So, so section so five point oh eight. Not how many they get up front. Sure. So section like, five point oh eight. Oh, you're saying yeah that they're five point oh six. Well, we what we what we I, if I if I'm understanding your question, that's reimbursement. So we do we do front load all employment categories. We front load at the beginning of their the year with whatever their allotment for sick time or vacation time or whatever maybe. Um, if they separate from the district before the year is out, then we look at the calculation and have to make a decision if we have to reclaim What's some money to time compensate time? for that. So while you get um, 20 days of sick time or four weeks of vacation, if you spend it all in the first month and then you leave the district, you will owe us money. Mm -hmm. okay. So then we recalculate based on the, you know, you, each contract or the teachers has a, you know, it's a number of days per month and you earn it, you accrue it or you get it all up front, but you do earn it oh, over the course of the year. So unless you finish the year, if you use all of your time, you know, then you, then you will owe something back or we'll be adjusting your final paycheck in some way. So I get the, you accumulate 20 days over the course of the year. How do I walk in the door with 90 days and then accumulate 20 every year after that? Or walk in the door with 60 days and accumulate, like, how is that? Well, uh, yeah. Again, this is the transition. So uh, employment contracts, when I was on the board, it was 120 days right off the bat and 20 you know, for administrators. Oh, and then 20 uh, every year going forward. I think the theory was, originally, I think the theory was to um, get you through to the point of where you'd have, you'd have access to long-term disability because that's a district provided benefit. So if you needed the 120, and that's a four month uh, waiting period to get to long-term. So I think, I think that was the vision of, and, that, and these contracts were in place for years before I started, you know, in this role. So, um, but I, but, and then realizing that, hey, 120, I mean, it is a lot. It's, it's, it's not common in other districts. Um, and then, so I was thinking, well, if the goal was to get you to long-term disability, 90 calendar, 90 working days actually is the correct answer. So we started to go to 90. And then we're just, and then in conversation with, with other districts, seeing where they're at, I, I see that even 90 is a bit much. So we're working, we're, we're slowly transitioning to trying to get it into a more reasonable amount and a more reasonable accumulation of, of sick time. And this time can be carried over each year. Right, we do have a cap. There's a cap for every employment group as well, so. So, I, and I understand how we certainly don't want at renewal time this huge su surprise, but why couldn't for consideration the carryover be grandfathered, but the, the new contracts have a reasonable time in there. I, I should qualify. If, you, if your question, just to, just to be clarified. So if you're, the language of the contracts, even though their renewals can be similar. So the, in, in the case, say, of the, the school's psychologists, they, when they first signed their contract, they're both, they were both newer last year. They got their initial allotment. Every year thereafter, they're getting the annual amount. They aren't getting another um, big chunk. So they, they got their big chunk when they started, and then they're getting um, a smaller um, annual allotment that goes forward up until the point where there's the maximum amount, and that takes several years to get to. And, and the other thing, too, is for some employment categories, like the school psychologists, they don't have vacation days. Uh, you know, there's no other, you know, it's basically they are allowed to use sick time for um, personal days and that, whereas teachers, have some sick days, they have two personal days. Um, Year-round employees do have access to vacation because they're, you know, they're here 
another day. So it's, it's a little bit of a mix that we are again trying to make sure that it is all making sense and that there are amounts that are more reasonable for the district. And psychologists, they are, are not year-round employees? No, they're 200-day employees. So they're expected to be here on all the teaching days plus um, 12 days before and after the school year that they work with the director of um, pupil services to, okay. to decide how that works out. Okay, all right. I have a question there. Okay. So Long-term disability or short-term disability you're going to connect to with this with the um, sick time? Well, uh, short-term disability is an employee purchase um, benefit we don't supply, so that's, that's an optional thing for the employees. Again, I think the, the vision from previous administrations and years ago was let's make sure the administrators have enough sick time to get to long-term disability. Right. If, there, if there's an incident that requires them to do it, that's why I think the 120-day initial number came from. Right, because that gap, if you've known anybody who's, who's sick time ended before that long term, that devastates the family. It really does. So well, it's a, it's a balancing act because on the other hand, someone who walks in the door and they're here for a month and then, you know, I mean, they have, you know, it's, it's a balancing act again. Because you want to you want to support your staff and give them opportunity, you know, opportunities that if something bad does happen and they need that extra time, to, you know, that they have it. Um, but, you know, again, there are- You would hope that those people would be outliers, those people who come in and take advantage of the situation or whatever, or else come in, they're, they're sick from the beginning or whatever. But I've just seen too many situations where people have been devastated from that, that little window there of two months or a month whatever so and, and you know and the 60 day now you know is aligned with fmla so basically you if, if you do a 60 day initial allotment then you're you have enough to get through an, uh, a legal fmla um leave that you'd have to do sure. um and again if you want you know if you can save it over a couple of years you can get even you know get even farther and get closer to the to the that four month piece so um, again it's we're trying to just balance you know between um um Providing attractive benefits for the staff, and then just you know making sure that we are protecting the district to some extent too, because uh, you know if people aren't here and aren't doing their job. Then you know we're we're usually spending more money than well to you know um, replace them while they're not here. I think it's crazy that that where I work, I mean, just in the business world, we have one week for a rolling year. So from now till this time next year, I have one week of sick time, and I almost never use it. But to me, those numbers are just crazy. When does your um when does your short term kick in and when does your long term? All of our kick stuff in? is pre option. So if you have it, you do, and if you don't, you know. Wow. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's, that's the real world, really, I think. Ms. So, I was just curious, have we ever considered checking into the short term disability? I mean we have, we offer it. We just we've never um, but it's just an but the staff pay staff staff, staff pay staff. for that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it is available through our through uh, Madison National Life, the same thing. Yeah. I mean, we pay for life insurance and long-term disability. Okay. Uh, short-term disability is an option for us. Okay. Yeah, so I asked the question because the numbers are so high. Um, it, it really depends on the business in terms of how much is offered or whatever, but the numbers seem really high for the contracts, number one. Number two, there's no consistency across the board. So that's why I'm like... Where are these numbers even coming? Well, what I'm happy to do is, if I mean, maybe to see it all in one place where we can compare the different employee groups. And if, and if the board wants to have a discussion about, you know, what that looks like going forward, and I can certainly get information from other districts too. This again, we don't want to be too much of an outlier, but, you know, we can certainly look at that as a discussion item, you know, in the near future. So. And I will add, you know, when it comes to the executive cabinet, I think I have people who are running. Um, as directors and running the district. Um, these are not, you know, employees at necessarily, you know, three years of teaching, four years of teaching with a master's degree. Like this is their profession and they are executives. So I think that we, when we are um, looking at these changes, we should keep that in mind and in consideration with what other um, districts, surrounding districts are doing. All right. So now we had discussion. So all in favor would raise hand and or aye. Aye. Those opposed? 
Aaron Cena, motion carries Namsley 720 for the appointment of Rebecca and for Hayden. All right. Thank you very much. Let's go on to item number H, budget update. This will be real brief because I haven't had a ton of time <laughs> to um, crystallize a lot of it. So that's to be my next uh, week and a half as I as I go through. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate um, you know, the information I shared from the state. So we do have some numbers, but at this point, until the state actually approved the budget, I'm going to continue with the preliminary budget um, using the numbers that we have um, that you were familiar with earlier in the spring. I want to add additional revenue at this point and just show how it balances out you know, at this point, and we'll have some other discussions. As Dr. Beadle alluded to, the 325 for this year will um, provide us with a little over a half million dollars of additional revenue. Um, I know that the teachers who are listening think, okay, that's, you know, there's more money available for increases, which may be, but we still have to figure out the, the, uh, um, the open enrollment piece, um, I, we do have other, you know, like I said, our insurance is going up 8%. We have transportation going up. You know, there's other things that we have to account for as well. So uh, we will look at that. Um, I will, however, say, not, not that we're going to spend a lot of time when we present the budget, but um, starting to think about the next year is that 325 in the following year is not helpful at all. Because once we lose our ESSER funding, Completely, that's a million dollars that we're going to have a shortfall. So even if we get another five hundred thousand dollars the year after, we're going to have a five hundred thousand dollar gap somewhere that we're going to have to address. So whether it's staffing or whether there's other things that we can reduce costs, or um, you know, we'll have, to talk, we'll have to talk about that. So and I think especially in light uh, later this summer, once we get the update on the facilities, to, you know, plan of where we are, um, we may have to have a longer conversation about you know what is the what, what's the financial picture of the district going forward. So but for now um, we'll limit it to 2324. I will have a budget update for you. Um, I'm hoping certainly by the Friday before the meeting and I'll send that to you uh, through email just so you can start to look at it if you have any questions. Um, there may be some numbers that'll shift over the over that weekend but I'll try to get it you know as far as I can so you'll see it. And then um, we'll we'll do it. The preliminary budget, as always, is very preliminary. And basically, once you approve it, I'm going to start working on the annual meeting budget, and then we can start looking at what are those, um, what does this new money provide, and what what are what are other costs that we're looking to address. So um, that'll be the scope of the next few weeks. Thanks. All right, thanks for that update. Let's go on to item three: ASC safety upgrades. That will be me. Um, and um, I have to apologize that, you know, um, this is just an informational kind of bit right now. Um, I had uh, told you guys at the, um, at the very last meeting that I was going to get you an update on what it would cost um, for us to get updates here at the ASC, um, both um, with a heavy, with a, the heavier end of getting a, a new building to everything to getting a, a light remodel. <laughs> um, and then we also have the other bit, which I gave you, um, I gave you another recopy of uh, just the best deal part of um, the part. Now, if we just choose to, at some point in time, have a further discussion about getting the best deal part done, just because of the safety end of keeping um, traffic um, and the safety of our people who answer the doors um, up front, um, that would be great um, at some point in time in the future here. Um, but to just to kind of go over this, uh, C.G. Schmidt was very helpful in to giving us a budget, so to speak, of what their thoughts would be to uh, get a remodel done. Um, was that for the hundred and four thousand? Well, the hundred and four thousand would be for just for the vestibule. Okay. Um, now, if we went with the vestibule and then later on went towards something else, of course, the vestibule part would be taken out of the numbers that you see on the spreadsheet um, in that big seven-page packet. Um, I do. Do you want me to go over the big number? Um, if we wanted to completely demolish the building and uh, start all over with a brand new um, administration building. We are looking at 
seven million four hundred and fifty two thousand. Well, I guess we'll just have a security person right there. Front right. We can keep moving. Let's talk about four thousand. Yeah, pretty much. But, but what I will say is that um, I do think that we do need to, as in the future here, have a discussion um, with. Um, you guys and getting a budget set up to um, get our front entrance at, at very minimum um, redone for the protection of everyone here at the ASC um, and whatnot. But if we wanted to go with the remodel end, um, they have given us some budgetary numbers um, that we can look at. Um, if you guys have any questions, and if if after looking at any of this, I will be happy to answer any of them. Um, but again, I will bring this up in the future to address this. Sounds good. Matt, so I was going to say, so Kev, well, which budget will we be talking about potentially taking this out of? Words? <laughs> <laughs> um, with the, yeah, I, I think what will... We'll have a better sense as to what we're looking at from the, um, you know, we get the full audit done because obviously doing, I mean, this is one piece, but there's other concerns that we're going to have as well. And so I think we're going to have to have that larger conversation as to what does that look like for us? Um, it, you know, um, is it something that we can sock away money uh, to do and then have it available? Um, probably not. So we'll have to figure out like what, what the next steps could be. So it's a larger conversation. And so I, I, I think um, once we get all this other data and we can actually see the condition of the, of the facility, just kind of like the other big ticket items that need to be addressed, you know, then we could have a conversation. It could be, I mean, we have the ability to, you know, borrow up to a million dollars on our own without any, we have no non-referendum debt right now. Um, the payments of that, the payments of that does come out of operating our, under, under the revenue limit. So that's a conversation or whether there's some other, you know, mechanism that we would look at. So um, I think it's it's early, but we obviously have some needs, you know, that we're going to have to address. And that's just one of them that's, you know, in the six figures. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Someone else had that yeah, question? I, I just have a, a quick question for Matt. Yes. Um, just looking at the cost here, and it's talking about being insurance at 6%. Um, and it's saying down there in, in the additional information, owner must carry fire, tornado, and other necessary insurance. Why do we pay for that when we already have insurance? That's, that's an answer I or a question that I can look into and sure. ask C.G. Schmidt about. Certainly. Um, this, I, I do believe that it's probably one of their precautionary Understandable, um, but it's additional for, cost for us for one that already I, I, I wouldn't imagine so, yeah. But and I think it's just um, uh, another way to cover, all, yeah. <laughs> to, to, it, it, it's probably another way to uh, cover in case or what ifs, yeah. I would imagine, but I can ask um, our representative. Um, because the other thing that we should be looking for is a certificate of insurance from them. They're on our property, um, and they should ensure to us that they have insurance in the event that something happens to one of them or yeah. our property or anything else. I, I do know that they, they are fully insured and covered. Um, they yeah. have uh, and they would need to provide you. And they would be, yes, and they would be fully willing to provide all that information for us. And please send to me to sure. one of our projects. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? So I was going to ask a question. I think Kevin kind of alluded to it, but um, my question is going to be is it anything? else on this list that we need as much as we need this um i i would i would uh, imagine that um we if we wanted to become compliant in some forms um our bathrooms are not compliant in this building or in this building, <laughs> in this building we are not compliant so I know. um that would be a, another discussion um again 
Um, I kind of asked that question today about that. And because bathroom, bathroom remodels are expensive in any fashion, whether it's residential or commercial, um, it would be a probably a six figure number just for a remodel of our current bathrooms. And not to mention, I know for the ladies room and probably the men's as well, we don't need some more space from somewhere because they can't well, be. I, I will. I will tell you this: there is space currently that we do have to make the bathroom bigger. The, okay. the other side of that wall that is on the far side, there's an exterior bathroom that has been vacated. Okay. Yeah, the two um, doors. That the two, two doors, doors that are on. Those two now. doors right there. Yeah, those, those two are doors bathrooms? are yeah. for uh, bathrooms from when this place was the police department. Was the police department? Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. So we do have room to remodel and make it so that our bathrooms are ADA compliant. Um, we would just need to come up with. The right, right. Yes. So right now we're just grandfathered into everything. Yes. Correct. So I mean, there and there are, and if you've been in the basement of this building, uh, could use a lot of work. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of rooms, and you know, down there. Um, so I think I think one of the challenges historically has been a we've obviously focused uh, all of our friend of dollars on student spaces, you know, and and things that the kids have access to, and we haven't sunk really any money into this. The most we've spent, I think, is to redesign this boardroom in the last. Five or six years, probably. Um, even the no. furniture that we have here. Yeah, you got a big screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even the, I mean, I'm saying like, and the camera system. Um, even the the furniture was donated uh, years ago. So, so we haven't done a lot here, and I think part of it was trying to decide whether or not this was going to be the administrative building long term, and then obviously now with the. Um, the library changing you know, all that whole situation. Um, if this is where we if this if it, we decide this is where we are, then we just have to figure out um, is this designed the way we want it to? And is this, yeah. when do we want to? When do we? If we do, um, need to update the well, buildings. So. I'm for prioritizing the kids, so that's fine. But I would like for this space to be safe and then. Uh, Mm -hmm. And ADA compliant. Any other luxuries I could care less about? The kids are coming first, but ADA compliant and safety. That's whatever skylights and bats and ambient y'all want now. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get this in motors in here. Yeah, we're going to light stuff. Like, they don't like lights in this building anyway. We sit in the dark all day. It's in the dark all day. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are and I, yes you're right I, I was recommending skylights but we do have old yeah. old um, systems the chiller the you know heating is is so yeah but well I guess you want to call it safety that's fine um, there are other things that are you know things that we would look at um, as well so again I think it is a big picture conversation and I think once you see it in context of what the other things are I mean the big ticket items I know of are the track. Um, needs to be resurfaced, and the other question is coming up is the tennis court. Uh, right. but, but are we? Don't we got a facilities plan? Is that an upcoming? Well, that, yes. that, that's what upcoming. That's, yeah, we'll have that at the end of August. Right. All right. Cool. So that's part of that whole. Right. Then we can know more about this space as well. Yep, yep. So, Matt, I guess though, I guess you got some work to do there. Yes, sir. Just a couple things. Yeah, because I mean, I would <laughs> like to know what's what's between. A hundred thousand and seven million. Like we've got to have other options. Well, the, there are options on here. If you if you do look, there are um, like for uh, for for example, option two. Um, there is a light or a medium remodel and a heavy remodel. Now uh, the in, if you look on the colors of the um, option two. Um, in orange would be the quote unquote medium remodel. And basically what that does is that puts a wall from there to there. It encloses this area right here and gives uh, uh, um, a new entranceway. And a separation for And a separation from, you know, Everyone. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, I guess my only problem thing is going to be with that is, is how do we look everybody in the face saying we're about to do a $2 million re reboot 
for the administration building. So that's what that's what I'm saying. There's got to be some middle ground because we've got this hundred and hundred and four thousand. That's great. There's got to be some other levels in there before we start to hit. Well, we can we can we can do things in absolute phases. Um, I did talk to him um, about um, the bathroom remodel. Um, he, if you look at the uh, option two, if you look at the heavy the office heavy remodel, that is basically doing the bathroom. The right bathroom. So are they the only um they're the only company thus far that has gotten back to me in any kind of form of wanting to give me any kind of options. Have you looked I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I certainly agree with ensuring the security of our administrative team mm -hmm. without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Um so is there something that can occur to make that happen, even with this hundred and four thousand? Minus the other things, is there a way to secure this building to the degree that you're thinking about? Um, right. So right even now. cutting down this, because to the points that are being made, how are we going to justify and, and listening to Kevin talk? He's just talking 24, 25, we could potentially be $500,000 looking for additional $500,000 to operate. Um, and so to justify, we certainly can justify ensuring that our team is safe. And so is there any dissecting, if you will, even of the 104,000 that can give us that safety, even um, not having to spend the, the uh, six figures? I can absolutely talk to them about that yeah um i think a lot of it has to do with um doing the structure of everything um i can double check with them and find out if there's a way to cut down any sort of kind of costs when it comes to the vestibule area um and to see if we can relook at that yeah. Well, part of the thing too, though, is, is remember now they have the contingency dollars in here, that other insurance money in here and stuff. So there's a that's uh, approximately like what ten to ten to twelve thousand dollars, right? Correct. So, so, you know, just so mad, I would just say, you know, do your thing, look into it, talk to them, see what they say, come back to us with some numbers, and then we know I, I, we're doing a big facilities plan come August. And hopefully, it's maybe a phase. Kind of I, I, would, I would agree with that. Right, like we could phase in depending on how our budget um, looks and what, what mm -hmm. happens up in Madison and that sort of thing. Um, and that way we're not taking a big hit. You have the time to do a full. I, I think the only question, I don't know the man, we more of an expert, but I know historically as we've sat and talked about this building is, is that what does doing something trigger? Because then you get into fire suppression, you get into, uh, you know, other things that don't exist. And so I don't, I don't know, I don't know the, you know, what those cutoffs are. So it, we may have certain things that we can do and stay within a, a narrow envelope of what it would cost, but other things will trigger other expenses that we would have to then invest in. And none of it is exciting. And so, uh, but it's, it, but, but not, I don't think though point. that the professionals here could, you know, advise us and guide us That's in right. terms of, you know, I can, I can absolutely do that. And then, um, once I have this, um, once I have more of a, a look at something that maybe we can slim down or we can do something with, um, I will invite CG Schmidt to come and be here so that you guys can answer or ask, ask questions. questions. And, uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. I mean, right now we have a system where someone has to buzz to get in. We bring right. a bell. What's going to change in this new system? Right now we have a system where, where someone has to be buzzed in. What changes in this new system? This new system with a new vestibule area that stops anyone, even if they do break in through, let's say they break in through that door. Now they have full access to everyone. If they break in, if we do this new vestibule area, they break in through that door, they have walls. They have walls, a secured door, a secured glass to stop anyone to just walking into here and 
doing as they will. And not even a break in. Even if we let them in. Even if we let them in. They can only get in one spot. Get an angry parent who says, oh, yes, I'm just here to drop off some paperwork for you or for, you know, Dr. Brown. They buzz her in or him and they say, too bad, so sad. And so. But in that scenario, inevitably, someone's going to get in and it's going to be someone that agree them. So but the, 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 the vestibule area somebody. part would enclose them in. The rest the of the people? Way. Correct. So it would, it would protect us and it would actually protect whomever is answering the doors at that point in time. And that's what you talked about before when this after whatever happens happens. Correct. But that's not what you brought back. That's what the 104 number is. That's what the 104 is. But all this other stuff is just... Other stuff is just... Yeah, the other stuff right. was, in That's grand scheme different. of things, here's what we would need okay. to do if we were to do a remodel of this entire building. Because I thought we, if we... Because I, I got, we got our past, we focused on other things. We yep. need to focus on this vestibule. And that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I would, I, at the last meeting, I told you guys that I would have a bigger picture right. for a bigger okay. picture, just not just, that I looked at, I gave you guys this, now I'm giving you guys this. Yeah, I get it. Well, when you so. bring in um, the Schmidt, the CG Schmidt, make sure that they know that we're really interested in that part. Right? Okay. Right now, you know, we might have questions later on the lines for this, but we'd like to get this secured this year. Okay. Yeah. Would you would you like me to arrange for the next board meeting for them to come out? Well, well I'd like to see the budget. You figure out how to budget. Right, right. Like, okay. well, yeah, yeah, where are we going to come in? See, because to one of the big things that I'm thinking about right now is is this. All the stuff in this building has been grandfathered in, right. and then as soon as you start making any changes, yeah. the grandfather part goes out of the window. So my so in, in the grand scheme of things, this looks all great, and wonderful, and fine and dandy. But once you start doing one thing, like we started talking about, like with the bathroom, so we've been grandfathered in about the bathroom. So once you start making some changes on certain things or whatever, so I'm just hoping. So man, I, I need you to be talking to C.G. Smith to find out what happens if we turn around and we do this. Will they turn around and take away the grandfathering in? From other things that are in this building? And I will absolutely ask that question. And is there anything we could add out that would not mess up the grandfather? So, so you have your best of you and you're adding a pre death view that does not depend on that grandfather and structure. And you said you only got responses from. From C.G. Yeah. Schmidt, how wide of a net a net did you cast to try? I, to- I, I tried contacting four different companies, actually six different companies. Uh, two that called me back said that they no longer do commercial construction, and one company called me back and said that they're booked out for the next two years. You cast statewide? Never. Uh, no, I casted what? southeastern Wisconsin. Well, these companies have a lot of referendums that just got passed. Yes. I mean, my print rod. And I recognize that C.G. Smith has been our partner, and, you know, they've been a part of the last referendum or three yeah. referenda, maybe more. Three. I know the last three. It may even have been other things. And they've done other. We did the K-4 class or the interior class of the locker room. So we have so they've been yeah. They've been a, a big part of it. So uh, they know our buildings and. And that's so naturally just to call them in to get a rough idea. I mean, if we're getting to the point where the board wants to move forward and we want quotes, I mean, we'll get to that point where we can actually be competitive. But I think just to give you a sense of this is what we're, we're kind of looking at. Well, that was nice. All right. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that update. Now let's go on to item number four, engage board and community lead, discussion and approval of the elementary school for as a polling site. Would that be Dr. Kelsey Brown? Yes. So I will to lead on this one and we do have Tyler. Tyler, are you still there? Oh, oh. Well, yeah. you know we should have Tyler. Go kind of first then since we feel is Tyler he's, he's yeah, still he's, with us? He's on there. He's I'm there. here. Okay. Tyler. All right. Thanks Tyler. Yep. Um, so A is obviously contingent. If you approve A then you know and B becomes an issue. But um as you well know for some of you from for some board members that are around were around in my first year. Um, we had this conversation around moving polling sites in the community from churches to the elementary school. Um, we did do a walkthrough uh, with our previous building and grounds director, and 
it kind of fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was the first point of conversation that we had uh, in this in this space. Um, but meanwhile, this year uh, we resurrected the conversation again, and um, it has been approved by the village board. I did upload the board, um, the village board's uh, information in regards to um, the approval of the polling sites being moved from the churches to the elementary school gymnasium. Our our challenge, as I explained to Tyler when we first started having the discussion, is I think this is something we can accommodate. Um, our biggest concern was the safety uh, from the standpoint of safety, uh, having children and staff in the building at the same time, that would bring us pause. But if the board were willing to move some of our Friday PO days to a voting day where we only would have staff in the building, staff uh, employees in the building, then we think that's something that we would be able to accommodate. Now, um, so the first point of uh, discussion uh, and we're looking for approval from the board to agree to uh, move those two churches, these two churches, um, to the elementary uh, polling site at the gym in the gymnasium at the elementary school. So the gym is large enough to accommodate the folks from both sites. Mm -hmm. No yes. the point of clarification. It's just Shalom. The site that was, that was at bad. Trinity, which is now Rise MKE, that, that will remain at that polling location. Okay, my apologies. Okay. Thank you. Right. Yeah. So one. Okay. I just have one question though. I mean, I think it's wonderful that the polling site will be at the elementary school. I mean, most areas do have them at the schools already. My only concern is the parking is because I know if they don't have enough parking in the front, those areas outside, on the, um, those are heavy, heavily ticketed. And people who park out there to come in and park, I mean, to um, vote, will end up getting tickets. So that's my only question. Are we having them come in through the, the side where the uh, parking lot is at? I can answer right. that. So yeah, we have them come in where the parking lot is. We're going to come straight in where the parking lot is, that door? No, no, no. no. So, on the side. Yeah, on, on the east side of the building. Right, where the parking lot is. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay, so the conversation with Tyler and the village is we would ask our staff to park closer to um, the swamp area. We, okay. On that day, we would ask them to park closer to that area so that we can have more spaces in the front mm -hmm. um, okay. for the voters to be able to come in. Um, and then for our, you know, our, our more seasoned uh, community members, they would have to walk as far. And then we also talked about uh, creating our own um, disabled stalls, if you will. I think there are probably two or three down there. And so we would, we would block off that whole, front, not the whole front row, but the right side of the front row to um, make our own temporary disabled parking stalls for individuals who are in wheelchairs or um, need additional assistance can park there and then enter um, into the gymnasium to Matt's point through that through that east door. So we had those conversations and we would again just send a you know an email to the staff to say, hey, this is a PO day, but it's also a voting day and we're asking that you will park um, closer to the east side furthest furthest east in, in that parking lot. So we will make sure no one got um, tickets in that day. So second question is then there they will be limited to a, a particular space, you know like when you first, when, I don't know what it's like at Shalom Baptist Church, but I know what it's like at Trinity. At Trinity, we only have access to two rooms, you know, so they're kind of limited in, in the space, whereas people can kind of move around. Are we going to have something that kind of um, uh, limits their movement throughout the building? Yes, we could close those doors at the end of the hallway. I'm just kind of concerned about the teachers that we have some um, parameters for keeping them safe. Okay. Yeah, we would do that. Okay. So that was the agenda item A. So if there are any other questions. Um, so I know that some of the concern we had before uh, with having it elsewhere in the district was the wear and tear and those kinds of things. So we don't have any of those concerns for the elementary school? No, uh, because remember before, it was trying to use the field house, and that right. was the concern. So now in elementary school, we don't have the same, we don't have that same concern. Relationship to the, uh, the floors and all the rest of that different stuff. 
So where exactly will the polling place be set up in the elementary school? In the jail. In the jail. So we did talk about more issues, so that's not an issue. Right. Not at that elementary school. No, remember, that was, that was the uh, high school right. we were trying to do the field house. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because we will be, we during that time we'll cover we'll cover the gymnasium floor in the in the elementary school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Would someone like to make a motion? But Dr. Beagle, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agreement with the village of Brown Deer to utilize the Brown Deer Elementary School as a polling site beginning in 2024. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Bacon. The motion has been made. Do we have a second? Dr. Beagle, I will second that motion. Thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. The motion has been made and seconded. Any other conversation and or discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor will raise hand and or aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none, motion carries unanimously 7 to 0. Tyler, you got a new polling spot. Hey, can, do you mind if I just talk for a minute, real quick? Yes. yes. No, I'll just play. <laughs> Go ahead, Tyler. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I personally, you know, some of you I haven't met yet. Most of you I have, but I just, you know, I, I, I want to thank you all for your service. You know, I, I, you know better than I how difficult it's been since 2020 just serving any school district. Um, but the service that you're providing to Brown Deer is really valuable. Um, over the last few months, I've been in a few of the the classrooms um, um, with the students um, on, on different opportunities and the, the the quality of service that we're getting in the schools um you know it's it's been really cool to see firsthand at it at you know different age levels especially i have a five and a three-year-old and so in when i was in the elementary school for instance it was just cool to see you know the the, the students and, and how well uh, the the staff and the teachers worked with the students so I know, you know, a lot of things that you're talking about has a direct impact with them. And um, with some of you, I was working with you on the strategic plan stuff when I would attend those sessions. And I just, I want to really thank you all for uh, this really good partnership that I feel that we have between the village and the schools. And if there's anything that you need to talk about from a village perspective, please know that whether it's a phone call or email, or just stopping by, uh, my door's always open. Um, so I just really appreciate this uh, partnership and just wanted to thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it, because this is actually probably more communication than we had from the village manager than, than we had uh, the previous one in years. <laughs> so well, that. I, I, I can tell moving forward, you know, I want to be as visible as I can especially, you know, just how much I do value the school district and you as a school board. So please know I'm here any point in time to be a resource for you. Kevin, I think we ran, ran into each other too when it, there was that lobbying effort in Waukesha. So, you know, at any point in time that we can interact with each other is, is a huge positive for me. And I, I truly value that. Sounds good. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. All right. Let's go on to our item B, uh, discussion and approval of the district uh, instructional calendar. Dr. Kelsey Brown. Right, so um, thank you for your approval for uh, using, a, uh, using the elementary gym for polling sites. And so with that, we will need to make some revisions to our um, instructional calendar that was approved January or February. Um, so if voting takes place in February, um, that would be February 6th. And um, in order to make this, uh, and let, me, let me back up. So February would be February 6th. Voting in April would take place on Tuesday, April 2nd. And then August, if we have an August voting session, that wouldn't be an issue because we're obviously not in school. So um, we still can make it happen, but no changes to, to the instructional calendar. So we are proposing movement of the February 9th PO day to February 6th and the April 26th PO day to April 2nd. Uh, and then we, of course, will come back to the board in January of next year as we propose our 24, 20, I'm sorry, yeah, 24, 25 instructional calendar to meet the uh, voting dates for that following year. So, so really, we're only really talking about two days. It's making right. it a change for, for two days, potentially, yeah. potentially three max if there's ever anything that happens in March. And, and right. basically the April May takes on the, the end of Easter break. So really August, the way I see it, August will never 
if we have to vote, August if we vote work. in August, it will never be an issue right. because we're not in school yet. Right. right. So but we may not have February. Oh, right. Correct. Because that's always a primary. Right. And then in November, don't we sometimes we may have one in yeah, what about October and then we, before. So we'll bring November back be on to you on the new instructional calendar. Right. Okay. okay. So the one thing, though, is that you won't know if there's a primary until right. January. So I don't know that you'll want to change it. I mean, right. could, I suppose, right. but. No, be, we would do whatever changes. Right. I mean, yeah, you just you have to plan for February regardless of whether there's right. actually right. right. Cool. Perfect. All right. Would someone like to make a motion? Dr. Vito, I'd like to make a motion to approve an amendment to the approved 2023-24 instructional calendar to accommodate the request of the village board to utilize Brown Deer Elementary School's gymnasium as a polling site beginning in 2024. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Megan. Motion has been made. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? You can see none. All in favor will raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Seeing none. Motion carries unanimously 720. All right. Let's go on to our item number C, strategic planning update. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Vito. Are sailing right along um, with our strategic planning process. We had a very engaging time with Ted Nisky in developing our KPIs. And before you, what you have is a proposed timeline uh, for continuing to get through this process, uh, including uh, some August dates. Uh, where we would present information to the community. So what I, I'm not looking for necessarily approval around anything. However, uh, if there's anything that you'd like to discuss or would like to see a revision to or would like to add, um, that would be very helpful. In terms of the calendar, yes. Okay. It's um, 2023 planning proposed timeline. So, so I have a question around KPI sheets. What, what do these numbers mean? So um, each KPI adds up to 100%. And what we did as a team is um, the pieces that were held accountable for or held responsible for, we assigned a percentage around the ones that we, uh, that we felt as though carried the most weight. So, for example, with the report card, we know every school district in the state of Wisconsin, um, that's an account accountability measure for us. Um, and so the weight that we uh, gave the report card is 40% 40, 40 as a team. So, again, all of those add up to 100%. And we looked at it in terms of how much weight does each of these carry as it relates to wanting uh, accomplishing that particular KPI. So, 40%. The report cards themselves contribute 40% of our success for student learning. Right. Then what you will what you will see is um, when you look at when we reviewed many of the um, other schools that are working along the same lines, the majority of them were 40%. Mostly all of them, actually, um, because we know that that's a, that's a state measure and we're all held accountable for that. So, I mean, I get I didn't go through the process with you, but just looking at this sheet, these numbers, they don't really indicate anything as someone who are just looking. So, is this going to be part of the develop? Yes. Um, so, what you will find is um, the next step in the process is the team. So, we have team leads. Um, Kevin's a lead around the fiscal um, financial stewardship, um, Dr. Glass, student learning and success, Erica Ramos, safe and healthy, and then myself under engagement. And so we have um, another session that we'll engage in where we will talk, we'll define these, we'll talk about the celebrations, we'll talk about areas of improvement. Um, so that's the second part of, I'm sorry, not the second part, that's the third part of the process because we met with Jeannie. Um, from season six on Monday to help us um, to help us through getting that process started. 
Go ahead, Ms. Smith. Can you send out those definitions at one point? Or once you all have, have, did you define, because, you know, I'm still mad about the five days that were not no, strategic the, planning. No, I think the five days is very helpful in understanding what a culture. Right, a culture change. And I probably, you know, wouldn't have signed up for that because I've been through those before, but I did sign up for strategic planning and that got culture change. So, but with this specifically, could we have, and I just, just some more descriptors given to us, you know, about the the under student under the report card. What what it what what were you all thinking? You said you're going to go in and find right. some definitions for so, what was going on. We're following the same. Can we get those in some blurbs? <coughs> or the no, I mean, just some small descriptors because we're looking at this and we're looking at the right, and that's, that's still part of the process <laughs> that, we're we're, that, that we're working on. So, so we had Ted, it. we worked with Jenny this past Monday, and now on June 26th, the team leads will be pulling their teams, everyone who um, plays a role, for example, in student learning and success will con come together and we'll define what that looks like and where we, and strategies we want to employ to move those partic particular KPIs forward. And you're gonna we're not done yet. To us. Yes. All in one day or will we get the, the team lead for student learning and success and kind of pop through these five and then financial stewards or, or how, are, how are you planning on doing that? Well, that. let us go through the process that, on that Monday first. Yeah, we would have wanted would've to have wanted. that, you know, if we're thinking August and that's, can we start it in January? That should be sketched out. They should, you know, I think we're built, we didn't build it then, so now we're building it now, which is fine, but to sign off on having it done by August, right now we should know, okay, um, Dr. Glass is gonna pop in and give us the descriptors on, on the report card, um, college and career ready. So we, yeah. So I have for student learning and success, Dr. Glass, principals, coaches, guidance counselors, and Ms. Ramos. Okay, and if you could just send it to me because I don't want to write it out, just send it to us so we know who the team people are. They're going to come and give us the, so that in August, even the people that didn't go through the five days of change, We'll have some idea of what we're yaying or naying or getting behind or understanding enough to support. So does the other part to this address the questions? Is there something on so the first? proposed timeline is what I've laid out in order to get us to completion. Yes. <laughs> so we, do we have still have some work to do? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was, I was just curious, looking at your timeline, um, the August 10th, the community meeting, will there be a draft available at those meetings? That's the goal. That is the goal, because, yeah, it, it didn't say it, it just said community. It does say sharing the final plan on August 30th, <laughs> but the 10th and 17th, there will be a draft. Will there be a time where the board will get a draft, particularly before it goes to community, possibly, or at the same time. Even bigger than that, yeah. a, a meeting. Right, so, right. I exactly. mean, because so we, that, where, where does, that's, that's what I'm missing in this timeline. Where, where, are, where's the board? We can add a date for that. It's not there, but I'd like to add a date. I want to do yeah. What has been shared with me is the process, the way this has worked is the plan on the page and all of those pieces are the are the day-to-day -day pieces. Like that's not necessarily board work. I mean, you can see it, obviously, um, but that's the day-to-day -day work that we do as a team. But what has, the, ultimately, the board has to approve the strategic period. plan. Which, if it's day-to-day, -day, it's difference. functional, operational, whatever. The board has to approve it. And so, and then I also see on here where you're working to revise the mission, vision, and values. Is the board included in that piece? We will share that information. Share or include us in. <laughs> so when I first presented this, I said, whatever you would like for us to add, let us know, and we'd be more than happy to add it. And I did very specifically ask for the board to have Input, input into all of this, yeah.
<clears throat> so do you want to be part of the July 4th session? July 24th? July 24th? Welcome to attend. See, I, I think where our confusion came in at is what we thought that we signed up for, that we paid, that we were paying for with Ted is not exactly what we're getting. It seems as though there, there's. Would you, sorry to interrupt, but would you agree that the way that he's going about it is not how we thought it was going to end? Mm -hmm. yes. Correct. For instance, we thought they were going to have these meetings, bing, bing, boom, the meetings end, we got our paper. That's not exactly how it works. So it's not that we're not getting what we paid for, but it's how we're getting it, I think, is what you're taking issue with. Well, it's not only that. I think that the, ultimately, you know, and, and other strategic plans that we've been involved in or whatever, because I was involved in the last one or whatever, hey, we were involved, involved in relationship to it because ultimately it is the board that has to sign off on it. So it wasn't really, we never really talked about, well, this is day to day and this is this and this is that. We were kind of involved in everything because all of it comes together. And I, I think the way that this has kind of come about because we had two representatives that were kind of sitting, you know, kind of, Working, work representing us or whatever from what we got back from them was was it wasn't it didn't happen the way that we thought again like you said it didn't happen the way that we thought it was going to happen we thought that by the time all this happened there was going to be this strategic plan that was going to be put together by ted and team and all of us being collectively involved and in all the rest of this and it just kind of seems as though that this is not it's not the way that we originally thought the way that it was written up is happening because I know that like, there's certain board members that had questions in relationship to this whole process. And that once it got started, it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. I don't know any other board members want to chime in on that. Well, what we paid, we thought we were paying the RFP, the contract didn't even have um, strategic plan on. So that's when I realized, oh, it's just, that was after it all ended and kept some of the contract. Dr. Brown, the process that we're in right now is still a part of the initial process, correct? And Dr. Brown has conferred with other districts who have gone through the process and they do have a strategic plan as an outcome. But this part of the process was not related to us up front. It wasn't, we won't do five weeks of training with a consultant for $15,000 and then build our own without the, the element of his guidance. His guy, well, no, they're using him for this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's still I mean, without the element of collective, oh, the collective collaboration. collaboration. Yeah, I think collaborative, the collaborative. piece that was missed for us, and, and Stacy was actually kind of saying it, is that we believed that five weeks of working with Ted, and at the end of that five weeks, we were going to have this strategic product. plan, a product, a finished product. And it obviously isn't working like that, but. We certainly are, are, are past that stage, and we want in certain areas, certainly if we're talking about the revision of our mission and vision statements, to um, be involved in that. And so um, I think that we can point out, and I think the other thing as Monica asked for changes or for the timetable here, the other thing is we would like the opportunity to take a look at the initial draft of the, pro the project before it goes out publicly or otherwise. Um, and so we can include potentially a date within this timeline that we can actually have a meeting rather than it's being sent via email to us, having a meeting that we can sit down, sending it to us um, via email in advance, so we have an opportunity to look at it and review it, and ultimately have a meeting where we can come back together to have a conversation about it sometime before this August 10th date. And having a meeting that the board can attend versus saying we're meeting from nine to one on this day, y'all can come if you want to. Yeah, that's well, that's and on a work day, the board gives me dates, and we can work with the dates. I think we did try to do that before, and we wanted to try to do them in the evening because we all work. So, and that didn't work. I, I haven't been, I haven't received any dates. Well, no, I'm saying when we initially first started everything, I think that the board was saying, well, okay, well, let's do it because you were talking about like some dates or whatever, and all of us work. So we couldn't do this. Everybody couldn't do the nine or whatever. Well, you know, but if we could do something. Because that was just training anyways. However, oh, moving forward. <laughs> 
what we would have to discuss. So Donna, can you send out a poll or something so that we can take a look at what availabilities will look like and then as well as what availability is said so that we can start to look at as this is all coming together. Um, we can contribute to the plan as well as to if, if the mission, vision, and values is being adjusted, we need to have some contribution to that as well. All of that before we're set to approve something on July 25th. And is that timeline it's even before uh, July 25th? It, if we're supposed to approve it, it, is this timeline even uh, is this viable? It's not viable because right now we should be refining. The, the what we, we were supposed to leave the five days with the rough draft. We should be refining KPIs, little bit of definition, not building. There's, this is all building, it sounds like. And we, they say fail quickly. So we decide, okay, this went wrong. So it looks like we're still building, but we're building without the collective. Because I mean, great, great five weeks on change, my stellar, enjoyed it, engaged it, engage in. But that should have been the building, the learning about the KPIs, the, the collective. This should be refined. We're not, and if this were refining, then that July 26 would work. But we're not in the refining yeah. phase. So let's not keep going long so that we end up in a hole and it ends up being August and we don't have what we are supposed to have. And I just want to chime in um, when we start to talk about the revision of our core values, our mission, our values, our vision, that's more than three hours. Mm -hmm. um, it is a process um, because we have to look at it and really, really kind of delve into whether um, what our statement is reading now is aligned to what we are actually doing as a district. And I just don't think that we can do it too delicate. Okay. I just did but, but isn't that what the board was depending on the group that was set forth to, to do the five weeks yes. for? Yes. So we now should be saying we put our trust in these people. These people are coming back with their recommendations. And I think to say that three hours, that's a that's a long time for us just to review we, something that someone else already put we, the work No, in. we didn't get to put the work in. We were told we would come and put in the work. But they're putting in the work now to put what you guys have done. No, 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 all all them, why we didn't, we're right. not, that was where we were supposed to put in the work. We didn't put in the work. We learned mm -hmm. something different and that, that we real? could use somewhere else. It's great. Right, but well, we didn't well, put in well, that what work. What are they doing then? What did they do on yesterday? Because um, if you're saying there was something, they had a meeting yesterday where they went over these But not the day, right? the small group, not the collective. The collective came and learned something else but, or other aspects. But aren't you working based on what went over for the five weeks? No. On your meetings here? No. So the five the five weeks was around the culture of change, which Ms. is talking about. So then the next steps beyond that were we work with Ted on that Friday to develop our key performance indicators. Jeannie Marie came in yesterday to help us begin to put the plan on the, on the page. We have two more dates set with her on July 6th and July 10th, where, where we will begin to look at the strategies that we want to employ to move the KPIs forward. Those dates are on here, July 6th, mm -hmm. July 10th. Are we paying Jeannie Marie? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, she's part of. She's all she's part of. Yeah, she's with him. She's part of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you for that. I did miss July six, July ten. Yes, those are two additions. And hence the reason proposed timeline. Um, so again, open to change, open to revising, open to editing, open to whatever part of this process the board would like to be a part of. I just. I need to know dates where you're available so we can accommodate those dates and meet those needs. But it kind of sounds like the board is putting it in a different direction, and that is not what's happening. I love that you're, we're, you're open to the board doing this, but it's not. The board put the trust. trust. I feel that. No, you were. We, we were. But I feel that the board put the trust in Dorothea and I to go and, and participate in this work. And the work... I feel, I don't feel duped, but I mean, five days is a lot for people that have to leave work. And um, the work didn't happen. And I honestly didn't realize it until we had one more session. So, so I feel that I don't want the board, because she kind of touched on it. Oh, we sent y'all there to do this. <laughs> but it's like you said, 
you sent us to a play, and there and there and there was a carnival. And it was a high drama. You sent us to high drama, and there was a carnival that was amazing. So I just don't want to feel because I I don't like not achieving. But there was th that that content was not there for me to to interact with. Oh, did you? Okay. I mean, to be totally honest, I I kind of felt the same way. Um, and I guess, but I was okay because of the fact that the, the management team was there that, that are over each one of those. I see the process that I didn't see before, but I do see the process. But the collaboration. Um, with the, I, you still had Kevin and Tanaka and um, 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 I'm uh, you know, all of the all of the management team is there. What's missing is, of course, the representation from the, the community, the students, and the board. And the teachers. So, Their voice was oh, and, well, and the teachers. Yeah. Well, the, are, are the teachers on the, the oh, teachers good. are on those okay. meetings. Right. So the missing, the missing pieces are three voices. The voice, the voice of the board voice of the students and we had parents that were at that initial meeting. Yes, students. Huh? Yes, students. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, that's what I said. Oh, okay. saying, the three that are missing now in the actual the, the actual meeting. So to be totally honest, I did think that we were going to do work beyond what we did. It was very engaging. I enjoyed it. It was rah rah and it gave some collaboration and some some team building for the most part or some or starting point for um, respecting others ideas. So that was good. And but when I went, I did think that we were actually doing some work. Um, I do understand everybody's point of view. And then I also understand that the work is being done, but there are three voices that are that are missing on this at this point or at this juncture, and we were under the impression that all voices were going to be included. So if I can add, it's not just that we thought we were going to do work, we were told we were going to work in the RFP in this thought that was what was supposed in the happen. suggestions of who we should hire. Can you know give us a recommendation of which one of these two we should go with, you know, who we were told. But it seems as though it's paid, totally different. We paid for work. Yeah. What the contract did not have so I don't know. Some I don't know if we should have seen the contract before Kev in got or whoever got the contract signed. But when he sent it to me about two a month ago, um, it does not. So I don't know. Fault, it does not say help this school district collective people develop the preliminary things for for a strategic plan. plan. It says change culture. So you know what? Take it, duped. We didn't go and say, hey, Kev, send that to us before we look, before we just send it out. So that's probably something, that's uh, that's our fault. Well, if I could say something real quick, uh, uh, you're going to get, a, I mean, the order may be different than we do. I mean, you're going to get a strategic plan. I, I would say, having been through three of these now, um, as, a, as an individual, I've done, I was in the, both of the other two, and now this one, two as a, you know, one as a board member, one as a citizen, and this one. The thing that was missing was this change agent part, because for 10 years, we had plans that we did and they were wonderful and we won awards for, and then they sat there and there, and that was the end of it. And so even as, you know, I wasn't excited in five years ago to go through the strategic planning process that we got to, because I saw we didn't really do anything. We're not a living doctor. Right. It's not a living doctor. So that mind, that mind, you know, it's, it's shifted at the, at the district level. Obviously it has to now permeate through the district, but that's as we present it. So I would, I, I guess I would say, I understand the, the confusion and, and that we feel like it, did, it didn't happen the way, you know, we thought it, it would. But if you look through the examples, the other samples of other ones that CESA 6 have done, you see what that looks like and what the end product is. And that's where we are headed and how we do it in these final steps. I mean, getting other input is, is but, perfectly fine, but right, we are heading there. So right, I guess I don't, yeah. I don't want to discourage you. Right, from I, thinking I got the sense from Dr. Brown that we were heading there, but I don't get the sense that we're heading. I mean, 
It's fine that we're heading there, but what we say we're going to do, we need to do. What we pay for, what we think, what we're told we're paying for, needs to happen unless we look at your contract. Is this right. timeline set in stone? Do we have to be done by August 30th? No, I just wanted to okay. lay, I wanted to just provide information regarding a timeline that I can see having not gone through this process myself either. It's the first time for many of us. I do believe that this process is, well, obviously vastly different from, I went through the last strategic planning process. This one actually helps us get to the classroom. And so that's what I like about this particular process. It helps us note our celebrations. It helps us note our areas in, of areas of improvement and also employ strategies to help us move these KPIs along. That's the cycle of continuous improvement as opposed to a strategic plan in a book, which actually ends up being a strategic plan on a shelf. So with this cycle of continuous improvement, there will be revisions all along the way when we will have to stop and tweak and pivot and become a little more flexible when we find out either we're meet, meeting that goal or we're not meeting that goal and we figure out why we're not so that we can change or chart a different course to get there. I would just encourage us to if you would share with me dates that you're available to be part of any one of these on this document, or if we need to change the dates, let's change the dates. Um, if we don't get to my goal was all was to have something in tow and share, or have something completed, have a document completed and share with our community as well before school starts. Because when school starts, trying to engage in a strategic planning process is going to be um, some continued heavy lifting that I'm trying to alleviate us moving forward. In what time, in what part of this would it make sense for the board to like intervene? So you're meeting with people at what point would you be ready to say, I think you, between these dates would make sense based on what you're working on? Because I feel like if we just pick a date, any date, it might not be a timeline that's in, well, in with what you're trying to set forth with us. Well, let's go with the, um, so I think uh, a value comment around the district mission, mission, vision, and values. The 24th has been solidified with Ted to work with us on that process. However, we can go back and ask Ted to review his calendar for dates that will work for the entire board to be a part of that conversation. That's on a Monday. What Ted shared with me is um, it takes two hours. It would take him two. It would take two hours for him to facilitate that process. So I'm going on what I'm being told. And what time do you all have that scheduled on that 24? We have that for Saturday? It's a Monday. It's a Monday. What is it? That was 9 to 11. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's, that's not something I would want to do considering that we have the board retreat that next week that we're going to have to take time for. Wait, what time did you say it was at? I'm sorry. Oh, you had a daytime. Okay, good. Yeah. On August 3rd or 4th, August 4th. Organization. So, I mean, the, the way that processes have gone, the five days, the things that you're going through now, if we're going to come out with a finished product, that's fine. If that's what's going to happen there, I have no problem with whatever that process is. But we, we just want to have some, some input. So and it, it looks like we need to have some time. Sometime in July, we need to determine what's going to work for the board. Could it be a hybrid meeting? Could it be hybrid where people are consuming? Then that way you don't leave, have to leave your spot wherever you are. You know, like at work, maybe you could take during the lunchtime to go in and, or whoever, you know. In the evening? I'm, I think I sound like I'm here in the evening. Well, she's, well I just made a suggestion. I was right. just saying. Oh, you mean if it's during the day? If it's during the day, if it could be a hybrid meeting, it will enable us to be a part because now the, the administration and the teachers are being required to stay here later if we're going to be a part of it too. So if we made it a hybrid meeting during the time that you already have scheduled, 
then we would be able to pop in and pop out or, or you know, and participate, I would think. I, and that's just a suggestion. Another thing format should be high. Maybe kind of do something last minute. I think you want to be a, as available to any participants as possible. Right, so a hybrid format. Last minute. Well, it seems like a dead um, don't want to beat a dead horse, but this part should have been done. We sent representatives just looking at the KPIs and defining that we already had four. Right, right, right. Right. So, so that's right. why we I said to, last minute. I didn't say that your July meeting. July 25th, that's our actual meeting. Right, is there any 24? No, 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 it's our board meeting. Board meeting. So is there any way that we can um, structure the agenda so that a huge portion of that meeting can be um, planned to discuss the approvals of the KPIs? You saying only potentially on only, July right? twenty fifth. There may be some things we have to do at the meeting, but can we limit what we do in the meeting for that day um, to work on the approval of the KPIs? And or, I have a second, re a second or, um, suggestion. Or oh, she wasn't finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, um, can you speak up no a little words, bit? The um, July eleventh. Don't see that date in your meeting. We one more meeting in July. We do. Remember, is that the 25th? Or it's okay. to have the 11th. Oh, right. Right. <coughs> Thank you. Done. Uh -huh. Are we trying to have the 11th? My apologies. The, another suggestion could be um, let's say, for instance, if they work on, um, on a project on the I'm just going to say the fifth. So if they work on the project on the fifth and, and, it's, and it's completed on the fifth and it's <coughs> disseminated to the board, um, we could review it at that particular time and make suggestions and additions or, you know, or whatever. That could be another option. On the 25th, you're saying? No, I'm just saying the date. Whatever date is on the calendar, because I put the calendar up, but whatever the date of the calendar is, if the, if the next day was June 20, was it June 26th? June 20th, July 25th, July 25th. The next day is July 26th. If on the 26th, whatever work is done in the district, on the night of the 26th, we're all given the information, it's disseminated to us, and we're able to review it and make additions, suggestions, or whatever that would be our for the next day our, for the next day no i'm just saying i'm meeting. just saying whenever they can get the document done and get it to but us you said look it. at it and we can make some suggestions that was just a suggestion mm -hmm. that they that whatever the team worked on together then they sent it out to us we look at it and we make decisions then or at, even at a board at the board meeting we said okay we got this document let us look at it. Let's see if we have some suggestions. Let's see if we have some additions. It, let's see what our input is. That's what that's what we're trying to like. If we're saying on the twenty fifth we need to approve the KPIs, and prior to that we have to have this meeting that we want to have. Right. I'm just saying it didn't have to necessarily be on the same day. I'm just I'm throwing something out there. It didn't have to be the same day that they're doing their work. I appreciate what you're saying. So I have a comment for it. Another suggestion on the 17th where you're sharing the KPIs with the dis district strategic planning time team. Team. I'm sorry, team. Yeah, to be those two teams. Um, can we can that be considered another hybrid meeting where we can also be a part of the initial sharing of it? Because you're you based on this timetable, you're looking to have approval on July 25th. And so we can be a part of the initial sharing of the KPIs. Um, we can have input there eight days, basically, before it has to be approved by the board. But what if we have input? Is it is it going? Is it will it mean anything within eight days? Well, I think that that would that make some changes. Are there right. minutes in the meetings you've had already that we could just review? We don't take minutes of the okay, no. okay. I'm just trying to find ways, and we certainly, I think we're all in this agreement that there were some problems in the in the beginning. 
but we're trying to find solutions to get to a successful end. What do, what do they look like? And out the board has decided that they want their hand in certain areas of this process. And one of them I would think would be understanding the KPIs um, and what that looks like. And so the sharing of them on July 17th will help us understand those, give us the ability to ask questions and then have Dr. Brown and her team, Dr. Glass and Kevin, Ms. Ramos and, and Dr. Brown herself, go back to these different areas. And if we're seeing and saying that there needs to be some change, then in that time period, that may have to happen unless we move up that sharing date. And, so, and that's possible. July 17th is... That's a date. That's a Monday. Right. It's a proposed date. And Donna sent an email to everyone who was part of the strategic planning team to see if that date works for them. So, again, if we go back to the fact that this is a proposed timeline, anything okay. can change. Sure. And I'm not even saying to change that. If that's going to be the time with that team, what could be helpful is if, like Dorothea said, if that could be a hybrid. But... I would propose that we keep our July 11, which would be our normal yeah. board working session, yeah. where we actually get a chance to walk through to see what's there. They should be done by the 11 mm -hmm. if you're going to be sharing it with the team by the 17. And then we will be able to go through, have an understanding, ask questions. Yes, but there are changes. adjustments. Hopefully right. there won't need to be very many um, at that point. And then we wouldn't have to disrupt the times that are already proposed. I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I still think that the draw here <laughs> that we are minimizing the power of the district mission vision and value. We're not I get my KPIs and I get how important they are and that, but somehow that discussion has to happen at the same time or at some other designated Perfect. time. Right? I totally agree. And that can happen on the 11th as well. As far as our discussion of it. I, so like I'm saying, we don't necessarily have to disrupt what Ted is going to do with the planning team, but we still want need that. our contribution Absolutely. to make sure we understand what's going on before we start pushing this thing out. And then we're like, wait, what happened? So you're saying on the 11th, have that still have the KPI conversation as well as the district mission yeah. vision and values conversation, but on that evening, those would be the only two agenda items. Yes. Yeah. So that was supposed to happen on July 10th, though. I got on my thing that somebody said something about July 6th and July 10th. What is that? Administration still working with Jeannie over on CISA 6 with the strategies and the continued engagement with the plan on the phone. So they should have something they could show us by Friday and Okay. And then on that July 25th, that's the KPI approval. It doesn't have to be. I just, just put I'm, I'm just trying to lay out the timeline so we can have some sense so of we maybe we're what's maybe out there so where we're start. trying to go. So I put that there, but if you want to do it at a different date, at a different time, we certainly can change it. But I wanted to put something out there because oh, yeah. Uh, can, I, I, I got a question for board members. How, how does your July's actually look? I do a lot. Of, I, I look. I do a lot of vacation stuff in July. I mean, what is everybody looking like? Okay, so so we weren't supposed to have a board meeting July 11. We were only going to have the one on July. Was that? 20, I still had it. 25th. Calendar, so so we were only we really for this. We were only supposed to do July 25th, right? Mm -hmm. So July 11th, there wasn't actually technically supposed to be a board meeting. All right, is everybody's available to even do July 11th? Available. It's hiding. Not I can even. do the 11th. I can do it virtual. I'm actually, I'm actually good for the 11th. 
So are, are, so are we saying now that we're going to, instead of not having the meeting on the 11th, we're going to have the board meeting on the 11th, but the meeting on the 11th is only dealing with two. the two items, a mission and a vision and a KPIs. KPIs. And reviewing what the And review is. whatever person that was planned. Oh, okay. Can you repeat Should have been done at a different time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I... So July 11th, I guess we are, everybody's in agreement then we're going to have a board meeting, but in that board meeting, there's only going to be two items. Item number one is going to be the mission and vision. Item number two is going to be all about the KPIs. Well, is the, is the KPI separate? Are those separate from the actual strategic plan? No. no. Okay. So, right. so then you yeah. all can be the strategic, strategic plan. plan. Right. The indicators. Okay. Everything I just want that. clarity. Yeah. <laughs> so then, yes, those things. Yeah, <laughs> just those two. Those two. Not just. I feel like Dr. Brown's I think it would be important to look at some of the other schools' plans in terms of how they have laid out their entire strategic plan um, to give you some sense of where we're going with the work. Um, so we will be defining our key performance indicators. We will talk about why things matter. We will talk about our places. We will talk about our areas of not talk about, but uh, lay out in this format what our areas of improvement are as we know it currently as the district. So if anyone has not seen any one of these, we have six, I have six or seven school districts here. here. I would encourage you to take a look at these. Yeah, look where are these districts at? So you know that. Are they close by us? Or are they up north? Or where, where are they? Well, you have. Um, um, you have Oshkosh, we have Rhinelander, we have um, Amro. They're, they're all very different. Um, these are um, some that Ken was involved in the military the process. Um, I talked to the Superintendent in Barable, who is also engaging in the same process. Um, so we're moving in the right direction. I think it's important for us to trust the process, given that no one has engaged in strategic planning like this before. Um, but I'm confident that we'll be able to get there. So if anyone wants to review any of these, um, please feel free to do so. Yeah, uh, so if, you, if there's a few specific ones that you can have credit for us for the next yeah, meeting, and that'll be yeah. the amount of time that we have for the have them electronic. Yeah, because like, I guess part of my thing is, is what my strategic plan, what the strategic plan should look like for Brown Deer, definitely is going to look different than what the strategic plan looks for, for Baraboo okay. and some of these other different places. Sorry, I mean, I'm just referring to them as it relates to the process, not the. Context. Well, I'm just saying in relationship to even the, the process itself. Some of the some of the things that are significant for us and what we need to be looking at and what we need to do are totally different than what they've got going on wherever they are. Like, Correct. so you got more of these some of these rural type areas or whatever. I heard you say Oshkosh, so that is an urban area, but they're not an urban area like our urban area and what we've got to really be well, talking about and dealing with or whatever have you. So, right. So that's what I'm saying. If we could lean in on separating the process from the content, I think if, if you can hone in on that, that will get us moving in a better direction because the process is the facilitation of what Ted and Jeannie is helping us with. The content will come from our collective teams in terms of what is applicable to our context here in the school district around here. So the Looking ones that did our own data. So are those ones that Ted did? Mm -hmm. So these are only the ones that Ted did. So I thought you were kind of showing us strategic plans from different people other than just Ted. No, these are the ones that he did. They're all different, but they're all from different. Ted's facilitation of the process for different school districts. So, I mean, there's a similar there's a similar format. I mean, you take the work out of trying to design something. I mean, the, 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 the way the information is presented is similar, but the the KPIs and what is important to each district and how they phrase and what work, you know, that is all unique to the individual individual district. Yeah. So I mean, that could help give us some idea yeah. of what we're going to be um, looking at. And like I said, the process is what it is. We. I'm trusting that eventually we will get to where we were right. planning to go. I just want to make sure that the board is a part of the process. 
So we're off. That's July 11th. We're planning to have our six o'clock meeting. So I have, um, that's what I have in a hybrid format. Yes. And I'll be, I'll be online because I'm not, I won't be in the city. Um, I didn't plan to be here because we are having a meeting, but I can get on online. I'm sorry. No, I said July 11th. I was I had already not planned to be in the city, and so I can get online at six o'clock. All right. Is there anything else? Can I um, just repeat? Um, so then I have July 17th for attendance uh, in a hybrid format for the I think that's the KTI. Is that one? July 17th, board attendance hybrid for the KPI discussion. Is that one to three? Is that the time? Correct. And that's contingent upon having reached out to all of the other people who were part of the strategic planning team and their availability. So Donna has sent an email to them already. Um, that would have been like Dorothea and Stacey were our representatives. We had our parents, we had our students, we had our district administration. And who else? Am I missing anybody? I think that was. And building, building administrators. So that's the 17th. Then on the 25th, I have KPIs approved at the board meeting, uh, but I would like to offer up, offer up at any point if you feel like we're not in that space. <laughs> that was cool. that was that. And then, um, then I'll add July 6th and July 10th to the proposed um, document as the continued work with Jeannie Marie from Lisa Six um, with the plan on the page and strategies we are um, trying to employ. And we don't need forward. to do the hybrid on the 24th because we're going to be talking about the mission statement on the 11th. Correct. Okay. Is there, is there anything else I'm missing? We don't know if Ted's available on the 11th. Right. So that I'll send them an email tonight if he's available on the 11th. But the 24th, I will strike from the document. So if he's not available on the 11th, what does that mean to us? I'll have to reach out to you and find another I'd date. I'd say participate on, on the 17th as hybrid because that's when you're sharing the KPIs and participate on the 24th as a hybrid. That doesn't give us a chance no, us to, to contribute nope. or to ask questions or oh, like we could derail the whole meeting. The APIs yeah. are done and you're sharing them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Without our input or us knowing anything about anything. So yeah, that's not gonna work. So I'll know his assistant tonight and see if he has July eleventh. And again, it's already going to be in a hybrid fashion. So, would we care if he's virtual as well? I wouldn't mind, but it's up to you all. To be able to get no matter. I don't think he's not to be in our face in order for us to be able to get the information. Anything else in relationship to this uh, strategic planning update? Can I just ask, are there any other pieces that you would like to be a part of, or is there anything else you would like to see? At? I, don't, I, I think everybody right now is probably brain dead from this one right here or whatever I have you and stuff. So, and if, if, this really fast. And if <laughs> board members, if you've got anything, just email the group and email the Dr. Brown or whatever have you, because I think like right now, my mind is going a million different directions in relationship to the strategic plan and stuff. So I need some time to think about some of this, uh, how we're going in the direction and everything else that's about to happen. So, so if everybody, board members, you guys could do that. If you do have any other questions or whatever have you, just send them to the full board as well as to Dr. Brown. Um, yeah. And then we'll, they'll get back to us to let us know about the, the 11th, if uh, he's even available to even do virtual. Right. 
Right. And if he's not available on the eleventh, then we're gonna have a and we're gonna have to figure out a whole different uh, time frame or whatever. Happened, but it's gonna have to happen prior to that meeting that you that that scheduled for the whatever that was the twenty fifth or whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go on to our next item. <laughs> another one. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make it kind of quick. Um, the next meeting, I mean, the next part of the meeting is the, um, it's actually CISA 1 and not CISA 6 uh, border controls report. And so I'm just going to report out. Um, the meeting was held on May 16th, so we're a little bit behind schedule on that. Um, just wanted to let everyone know a little bit about what happened. Um, I think everybody knows that it's a meeting that we just go to once a year. However, I wanted to kind of talk about the importance of, of that meeting or what my observation has been. So, uh, this is like my third or, four, third or fourth time going. Um, we can keep it simple and just have a person that goes every year and just to be there. However, basically what they're doing at these meetings um, they're choosing people from each school district. And what they're doing is, um, okay, so according to the annual report, there are 45 schools that are part of this um, CISA 1. And what they do is they fill out this paperwork if they're interested in being part of the Board of Control, the candidates. There was no minority representation there at all that are on any of those meetings that participate in creating um, programming for teachers and for administrators and for the board. No minority representation at all. Now, can people um, who um, are not minorities or not from other um, er uh, walks of life, different genders, different you know, orientations, all of that stuff. Can they, can other people be their voice? Absolutely. However, I just, I just think that we probably should put a little bit more stock in it. You know, maybe in the future, someone who might be willing to be a candidate and put their, their name in there to be voted in, to participate, to, to help to um, create um, the work that's being done there. For instance, we have a district that doesn't deal with CRT issues, but there are some other districts that may. And so just having a voice at the table sometimes, or having our legs under the table, however you want to say it, um, could be very important. And like I said, I kind of underestimated the importance of this group for a long time. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to go and give you these people. They fill in these um, positions. Um, border controls, representatives, election at large. So you have these people who are filling in on those positions. And usually I just go and I was like, okay, okay for them. Okay, okay. So I'm just kind of rubber stamping. I see what they are, what they say that they can do, but the bottom line is, is that they're doing work in the, and it would be nice if we had someone to do that work. Um, there was a conference. They do have a number of conferences that they talked about. There was a conference on June 19th and one on the 20th. Um, again, about um, educators and administrators um, learning different standards. So it's just kind of interesting. Um, I did bring back the annual report, so I'll leave it here. Um, this, is, this is a copy of what comes out from the group, you, everyone gets this and it tells you <coughs> two or three or four, but it might only be three positions that are open that you can fill into. And there's a period of time that I think each year that you work on it, but it's just kind of interesting. I mean, that's real simple. It's like, okay, this, these are my credentials. This is the reason why I want to work. And so I don't know, you know, hopefully I'm kind of in that sandwich generation where I'm kind of taking care of my parents, my mom now, my husband died, and my daughter. So I don't know what's going to happen next year that I will, if I'll be in a position to put my name in a hat. But 
maybe if people could kind of look at it and see if it's something that they might want to do. I don't know how often they meet or any of that information, but it's just kind of interesting um, because you're training the leaders or you're providing um, providing work for the leaders. And then this is the annual report. So that was that's, that's my only um, concern that we're not, our legs aren't under the table when we're the most diverse school district in the in, in the district, actually, or you know, and then CISO one for sure, because MPS is in there too. Right. I was, I was getting ready to say, wait a minute, that's but, I didn't see CISO, but CISO one, the CISO area number one is southeastern Wisconsin. Yep. So you're talking Milwaukee, you're talking Racine, you're talking Kenosha, you're talking below. I was the only minority there. I was on last year, Mrs. Um, Marvel was there and one other guy, but I did not see any other any other minority representation this year at all. Marvel Herndon? None. I'm That's saying what you said. You said Miss Marvel. You Marvel uh, Herndon? Marvel Herndon was there last year, and there was another guy. I can't remember what his name. He was a student to Dr. Brown. Remember I indicated to you was somebody who said that Marvel, you were there. Marvel, they were there. Eighty six place. Wow. Yeah. Are they a decision making body? Yeah. Yeah. The board of controls. Yes. They're the they're this version of the CISA. Yeah. Right. I mean, Gary Williams, who was the president before me on this board, served. I, I think he was. I know he was on the board of control. He might have also led the board of control. But I know he was on it. I don't know if he led it or not, but I know he was on it. He was going. You know, I think it was once a month. I think. Yeah. Never understood how it trickled down to the school. Right. Am I misunderstanding that power balance? It just seems like that's a table that we could or should possibly be at, just given the fact that we're one of the most diverse oh, districts yeah. here in the uh, southeast and all of Wisconsin. Yeah. You know, so just something to kind of think about. And so I've passed around the, the information. It can stay here somewhere so people can look at it if they want to. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for that uh, for that update, and I, I guess gives us something to think about in relationship to uh, potentially maybe one or two of us or whatever multiple little members of our board potentially maybe want to uh, run for that uh, board of controls, or because I know it's an election process and stuff, so you have to you have to have all your information out, and you can kind of you know. Uh, campaign or whatever have you and, and being able to go that direction. So maybe as a collector, maybe we may want to think about something and, and maybe one of us potentially uh, doing that. I don't see it. Yes. And they all ended up getting in because there were so many vacancies this time. And there usually is. There, there usually are a whole bunch of vacancies. So a lot of times you got people that end up doing it multiple years after year after year after year, and nobody else does. I think I think if you want a spot, you'll get, you'll get a spot if you want it. Okay. All right. Anything else? If not, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? No, I would like to make a motion. All right. Motion to adjourn has been made. Do we have a second? Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. Motion is made second. Uh, all in favor, raise hand and or aye. Aye. Any opposed? Here to see it done. Most cares unanimously. Call this meeting adjourned at 8.42 p.m. So now that we're having a meeting, I'm Eventually.